Hello, everyone. My name is Dave Casuto, instructor for Learn It, and welcome to our Acrobat Pro DC class. I am very excited to show you all the cool things that Acrobat has to offer. The new and improved interface of Acrobat Pro makes it so much easier than ever to accomplish so much with your PDF documents. So what are we going to cover in this class? We're going to learn how to convert non-PDF documents to the PDF format. We're also going to cover how to combine different file formats to PDFs, including how to make portfolios. We then do a nice deep dive into the editing toolbar to modify text, images, and layout, adding headers and footers, and creating all kinds of different types of hyperlinks. We also learn how to personalize the toolbar and interface of Acrobat to make it easier for you to navigate. We then cover the important sections on all the commenting and accessibility tools, and also how to create forms, security, and so much more. Now, this course is designed to be an interactive, hands-on course, so occasionally you'll hear me say, pause the video and practice on your own. So make sure you download the class files from the link below to do so. This will ensure you get the most out of the course and learn the program in a more experiential, hands-on manner. I'm looking forward to teaching you all the cool things that Acrobat has to offer, so stay tuned and get ready to learn. If you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. If you want to earn certificates and digital badges, please become a member of our Patreon. The link is in our video description. If you have any questions you want answered by one of our instructors, please join our off-site community. The link is in the description as well. And as I mentioned, this course does have exercise files and you'll find them in the video description below. Welcome, welcome everyone. Your eyes do not deceive you. Yes, this is a Microsoft Word document and I know that this is an Acrobat Pro class. So why are we in this Microsoft Word environment? because a lot of you are gonna be in this environment. A lot of you are gonna be working in a Word document and you want to convert it into a PDF. So let's now talk about the process and how we do it. And of course, we're gonna talk about the whys of what we're going to do. Now you'll see this particular document has a number of different elements on it. It's got some images, it's got some styles on there. It's also got some comments. You'll also notice that it's got some links and all that good stuff in there. And we're gonna see if Word and Acrobat can work together to make all these things then get churned out in a very effective and fluid way. All right, now there's a number of different ways for us to export our documents to PDF, and we're gonna explore a few of them. So let's now go over here to our file menu, and you're gonna see there's this option for export. When I click on that, you're gonna see very simple, is this option to create an Adobe PDF, fantastic, and it tells me here, convert PDF using Acrobat, and you can see blah, 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 pretty much like bragging about the virtues of what a PDF can do, okay? So yeah, definitely for security, hey, it's gonna be printable and viewable in most formats. PDF, in case you don't know, stands for portable document format, so that makes it so it can be available pretty much on most computers these days. All right, now when you are working in Word, you'll see if you have the Acrobat plugin, like I do, you're gonna see it's gonna look like this. If you don't, you will have something like this, and this is gonna be the Microsoft version of that. Okay, so I'm gonna be just using this one, and you will see when I click on that, it's gonna pop up, give me the option to now just save it, and it's gonna be a PDF, okay? Now, while I'm doing this, you'll notice a few options here. Now, I can name it, of course, and I can also view the results afterwards. I can also restrict editing if I want to. And when I choose that, it's gonna ask me to put in a password, all that good stuff, I'm gonna cancel that. And you'll also notice that there's more options for me to work with, and I can play around with these as well, okay? So we're gonna be exploring these in a different context, but I want you to just notice that when you are saving, to not ignore these extra options, like to restrict editing if you wanna password protect. And when you go to options, taking a look at some of the other things. All right, so I'm gonna cancel this. I'm gonna hit the back button. And this time I'm gonna go in a little different route for when I am saving my Word document into a PDF. And I'm gonna go over to here to this guy right up there where it should say Acrobat. Most of you, if you have Acrobat Pro on your computer, it should automatically have come up with this extension for Microsoft Word. So I click on that. You're going to see that there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different options here. Okay. 
you can see I can just create my PDF right here. I can set up my preferences. And then notice here's the group to create and share. There's mail merge, review and comments, right? Acrobat comments, right? All these things. We're gonna ignore pretty much all of these for right now, just for this introductory part. But I'm gonna go to over here to my preferences first before I create my PDF. Because this is gonna be a one-stop shop and I think a little bit easier to access. So when I click on that, you're gonna see this Adobe Acrobat PDF Maker dialog box pops up. Give me a whole bunch of options for how I want to ultimately export this document. Okay, so you can see here's my conversion settings. And this is pretty much just gonna be sort of a preset for a number of different things as far as our resolution, what format, what version you wanna do it in, right? All kinds of different things that you can choose from here in terms of your high quality print. Maybe you wanna be making it the smallest file size. So these are essentially just like presets. So as you choose these, a lot of your options will then be uh, compliant with what you have chosen within those settings. But let's now just keep it at standard for right now. And I'm just gonna go just choose some of these things that may work for me. So do I want to view the PDF afterwards? Yes or no? Okay, sure, fine. Do you want a prompt for Adobe PDF file name? Sure, absolutely, like relatively easy stuff there. Okay, now we're gonna skip over this advanced button because uh, it's actually not necessary to go there and I've seen that there's a lot of uh, kind of little bugs with it, to be perfectly honest with you. So we're gonna skip over that. And then over here for our PDF and then A, which stands for archive compliance, that's when you're working with an older version. Uh, sometimes it'll ask you to be compliant um, in that way if you want to embed your fonts and it's not working for you. So you can choose some of these older options as it comes up if you want to. Now, you'll also see here's my application settings. Do you want to create bookmarks? You know, based off of bookmarks you have inside of Word, you can absolutely do that. Add your links, absolutely. If you're working with accessibility, absolutely. Choose whatever you like, right, as you're doing this. Okay, so it's totally up to you. For security, remember we saw that earlier with our dialog box. Now we can see it in all one window. So do you want to require a password to open the document? Certainly yes, and then you put in the password, whatever you want, but I'm not gonna make that the case. So here is your also the option to restrict editing and printing of the document. Okay, so if you don't want people to be able to print it or edit it or anything like that, but they can open it, then you would put a password onto it. Okay, so you can say here, different parameters. If you want people to print, they can only print low resolution. Maybe you're trying to control that within your, within your company however you wanna do that, but just know what your options are here. And it's just good to know that you do have that kind of control. I'm gonna turn that off before I forget. All right, and then again, you'll see some other options once that is on. Do you wanna enable copying of text or not? Okay, if you're trying to protect your content, that's what this whole area is about. All right, now let's go over to here to the Word section. You'll see here are some Word features that are available. And do we wanna bring those over into our PDF? So convert displayed comments to notes in Adobe PDF. Yes, absolutely, I have those there. So those are gonna be converted. And then convert footnotes and endnote links. If you wanna do that, if you have those there, they will convert them as well. And the same thing with signatures. Now, you'll also see here that I have my comments. Great, you can see, bam, there it is. That's who's made the comments. And then you can say, do you wanna include these or not? And then you can also change the color of the comments very simply just by clicking, clicking, clicking. All right, bam. And that is how they're going to come in. Okay, pretty neat. So you just have that kind of control how you want to do that. And it's going to convert it nicely. Now, if we go to here to bookmarks, do you want to convert word headings to bookmarks? Earlier, I mentioned how we have these little headings across the board. You can convert these into bookmarks when you bring them into your PDF document. Obviously, we have not talked about bookmarks yet. We're going to get into those, but you will see what one looks like in just a few moments. All right now, you could also choose any of these. If you have any styles on there, convert those into bookmarks. Okay. And if you have word bookmarks that are actual bookmarks, maybe you want to convert those too. All right. So if you're not comfortable with bookmarks, but you are comfortable with headings and styles, you'll still ultimately get bookmarks, which is pretty neat. Okay. So I'm pretty much good with that. Now I'm ready to create my PDF. It's going to take me back to the same dialog box. I go over to here. All right. And then I'm just going to just put in some content here. Okay. So word convert. Excellent. Now I'm going to say save and make sure I have view results. 
I click on that and the little engine is running. Very happy. Look at that going crazy. And now it opens up to Acrobat and I'll be able to see everything. Okay. Including all my images there, all my text, right? Very good. And then I, oh, look at that. There's a little comment that shows up there. Lovely, wonderful. Oh, my links got transferred over. Love that. Came in pretty smoothly. All right now, earlier we talked about bookmarks. So let's go ahead and go over to here to our bookmarks. And look at that. All my headings are now bookmarks. So I can simply click on those and that takes me directly to that section where those bookmarks are, which in fact before were just heading styles. So very smart, very efficient, and very effective. All right, so you have this document to work with and maybe another document you wanna work with, please practice that up and then also give it a shot with your Excel documents and also PowerPoint if you like. See you in the next lesson. Now that we have a document ready to go, let's use this as an opportunity to explore the Acrobat Pro interface. There is a lot to explore here and there's actually a lot to customize. So it's pretty exciting. They've done quite a bit to make it a very user-friendly experience. Some things can be a little bit hidden, so we'll be exploring that, but much of it can be very personalized to your liking. So we're just gonna do a kind of a broad stroke overview and then we're gonna get in a little bit deeper in the next exercise of how we can actually do some customization of our toolbar. So let's just first of all explore kind of what's what and what's where. On the left hand side, you're going to see a number of different icons here, right? You move your mouse over, it'll tell you what they are. Bookmarks, page thumbnails, attachments, etc. But you know what though? I can't really see everything. So when I click on it, then I'm able to see, oh, great, wonderful. What about this? And we saw that earlier, right? When we were working at the bookmarks. Wonderful. Okay. Do I have any attachments on this? No, I don't. And this is the order you want to be working with in terms of the tab structure in, in case you are doing this for accessibility purposes. So you can see this is going to be the tab order, which we're going to be talking about in future lessons. But currently, just understanding that these are all accessible just by clicking on them. And you can collapse them very easily just by clicking over here, this little, little arrow. And then that goes away. So it gives you even more screen real estate. Click on it again little bit more access and then bam, you click on these icons and you can see everything there. Now, a lot of these little panels will have little sub panels inside of here, right? So you can see that within my thumbnails, I have a number of different options to explore different things depending on what I want to do. So if I wanna trash this page, look at that very easily, I can delete that page. If I wanted to insert new pages, I can do that. If I wanted to rotate my pages, I can do that. So lots and lots of options that we're gonna explore in future lessons. Again, we're just looking at the interface. So, you know, you're not, you could be a little more demystified about what's what and how to get to certain things. All right, now if I go to my bookmarks, you'll see again, a very similar type of sort of sub navigation. All right, so very cool. Go back to that and I'm gonna click over here and then I'm gonna collapse that. Now, on the top toolbar, you're going to see a number of different options available to you. Now, some of you may see different options than me, but we're gonna be able to customize this in future lessons to be able to make it so it looks exactly how you want it to look. All right, now, a lot of these may look familiar to you, like a little save icon. You can see here's a little print icon. Okay, you can see I can also go from page to page. Okay, very nice. All right, so relatively straightforward. Okay, so, and you'll see over here some different options here for selecting items there. You can see you can do that. Okay, maybe you wanna put a comment on that. Okay, so pretty neat. You can see here, you can pan around the document, like going up and down if you like to. And then of course, zooming in and zooming out. And to the right of that, you're gonna see, well, maybe I wanna zoom in at a very specific, specific zoom level. I can do that. Go back to 100, very cool. All right, and then these guys here, you will see when you click on that, how do you want to fit the page in? So you'll see here, do you wanna to fit to the width scrolling? Look at that, it fits in nice and big. And then I want to fit in one page just like that. So then I can see kind of the entire page all at once or go into read mode and you can see how that gets nice and big for me. So it's kind of like a presentation. I'm gonna hit escape to get out of that and I'm gonna come right back to my full one page, just like that. All right, now this option, move page control out of toolbar. What, what does that even mean? Oh, all of these 
are my page controls. Maybe I don't actually want this here. So this is gonna be our first little precursor to how we can control things. So if I click on this now, you're gonna see how then it appears down below. Maybe you just kind of want this there all the time, kind of floating. But I can very easily move that back and then it comes right back to the top toolbar. Click on it, come back over to here, and then just notice how when I scroll up and down, I'm able to still see those toolbars there, right? I don't have to really worry about it. And if I kind of mouse over, bam, just pops right up again and I can just move and click that back over there. All right. Now, some of these other options, again, you may or may not have, we're going to learn how we can customize this, just adding on some of your favorite items there so you have easy access to them. Now, let's go over here to the right-hand side, and this is where you'll be spending quite a bit of your time, and this is where all of your tools live. Now, if for whatever reason you don't see your tools, if I click on this guy right here, just like how we did on the left-hand side, right over here, if you're missing that, you will see it might be collapsed. And it's gonna look like this of just the icons, but no words. But if I wanna see the words, I'd like to read stuff, I know what it is, I can now expand that out. Now you can see what each individual command actually is available to me. Oh, pretty cool. So I can very easily say, hey, I wanna create a PDF and click on that. Cool, fantastic, all right? So I can go to these very, very easily anytime I want. And that's what we're gonna do all throughout this class. All right, and then the last thing we're gonna show you here is very similar to what we're looking at here is this tools option way over here in the upper left. And you're gonna see that's gonna take me to kind of the mother load of all my tools. All right, I'm gonna go back to my document now and you'll see how I can very easily toggle back and forth between my document itself on this tab and also go back to tools very easily. Okay, and we're gonna be exploring all these in due time. I just want you to understand the interface. All right, so you'll also notice that Next to tools is also home, and that's gonna take you back to potentially a good helpful place where maybe you want to access some of your files, right? You wanna go through your files that are either recent files that's gonna be available. You can see you can go through your document cloud if you want to, back onto your computer if you like, and then a few other kind of nice shortcut tips and tools that you can go through just from here if you like. All right, but very easily, I can go back to my document anytime I want, and there I am. All right, so in a little bit, we're gonna come back, we're gonna show you how we can kind of make the toolbar our own. But of course, that will change in due time for you as you start to learn more and more tools. So feel free to experiment and really get to know the interface for right now, get comfortable with it before we move on to the next lesson. In our last lesson, we looked at the general overview of the workspace. Now we're gonna take some ownership over the workspace by controlling what toolbars can show up there and how we can tweak certain parts of it and move some things around and really kind of build things up from the ground up and make it so it's personalized for us by us. So as we mentioned earlier, Acrobat gives us a number of different preset tools up on top here and also on the right hand side, we have all of our tools. Now, how do we access more tools if we want them? If you simply right click up on your top toolbar here, you're gonna see that there's a number of really wonderful options that appear here. Do you want to show file tools, edit tools, page navigation tools? Wow, amazing. So I can actually make it so these guys are going to show up or not show up. So guess what? I have this show file tools and a lot of these things that I already have are already checked, meaning that they're already showing up here on my top toolbar. So for example, let's say I don't use the Adobe Document Cloud, sorry Adobe, I click on that and then notice that little cloud icon goes away. We right click again and you'll see, okay, great. What about now I don't really use my starred files, that goes away. Okay, just really trying to simplify it, right click. What about some of my edit tools? Oh yeah, well I use undo a lot. I definitely wanna check spelling. So very easily I can just add these on. So let's add on check spelling, that comes up there. I'm gonna right click over here this time, why not? Just so I can be closer to it. And then undo, definitely want that there. Right click, maybe try to go to another one now. Page navigation, do I really use this? Actually, you know what, I kind of don't. So it's starting to get a little crowded. So I can really remove these very easily. Do you want to know the page number? So I am going to keep that there. And then just, just you're going to control however you want. Now, you will see that at the bottom, we have the option to say, hey, show me all of the page navigation tools. You'll see here, same thing. 
show me all of the edit tools. Okay, so if you just want to kind of do them in all fell swoop, you can absolutely do that. Or of course, you can reset it just the same. All right, now you'll want to play around with these, whatever's going to be the best for you. But I'm just going to go ahead and just bring in certain things and then you can decide what's going to work for you the best. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to bring up this actual size. I love that because then I can see, all right, what's that going to look like as far as my images, right? Is it going to look kind of compressed and kind of grainy? I just need to know. So let's bring up that so I can very easily choose that. Let's take a look at some other ones. Maybe do I want to bring in my marquee zoom tool? Sure. Why not? Okay. So when I choose that, I'll be able to just like zoom in on a certain area. Very cool. And then I can then go right back to this. So these guys are kind of counterparts to each other. So very neat. So right clicking goes a long way for you to be able to just really control what you want. Okay. Now let's go ahead and just check out some other things. We're going to skip over these for right now and let's bring up our properties bar. And notice there's a nice shortcut key for it. I click on that and you can see based off of what you have selected, it's going to show me different properties for that. Okay, so I might wanna know little bits of information about that thing here. So, okay, now let's go ahead and check out some of these other options like the menu bar, notice how that's checked. And then notice it goes away, let's bring it back, right? Pops right back up again, menu bar. Do you want that or do you not want that? Depending on your screen real estate, you might not want that there or you might want it, let's check out our toolbars, right? That all goes away entirely. And uh oh, what do I do? How do I bring it back? Well, it's a good thing I still have my menu up because I just go over here to view and you're gonna see here is my show hide options. And then I'm just going to choose my toolbar items and then say show toolbars and it comes right back. So in case that ever happens to you, you know that you have kind of a get out of jail free card. All right, so a lot of customization, just really looking at it, just this very simple right click can bring up a lot of options for you, okay? Now, let's take a look at this customized quick tools. All right, I'm gonna click on that, and this is gonna take me to a whole new dialog box where this can be incredibly powerful because I might want to really, really start customizing things in a way that's gonna be comfortable for me because a lot of things that I saw up there it's kind of missing things. And especially as you get more and more advanced with this program, you might want to have more options that they're going to offer you. So just notice here how it's all created by different categories, giving me different options based on different things I might want to do, like creating PDFs. Sure, I do that all the time. And wow, look at all these options here that I can now make a toolbar out of this. Okay, so you'll see again that there's all these different categories of what I can bring in, but where's it gonna go? It's gonna go up to here. So you notice how it says tools to show in the toolbar and then notice what's currently up here. So I would then be bringing whatever I use very often into this toolbar that's gonna show up over here. Notice these four are the same as what I have up on top and over here. They're compatible with each other. So what are some things that you use a lot? You really wanna ask yourself that question so you can really customize your quick access to those tools, okay? So for example, like comment, I do that a lot, right? So I actually work with, let's just say, I think I already have some of these up here already. So let's just go over here to text boxes, right? I do that a lot. So very simply, I can just select the tool that I want. That's gonna end up over there. And on the far right hand side, you're gonna see this little guy right there, basically whispering to me, hey, move this up there with the rest of these guys. I click on that and then cool, done and done. Pretty neat. Maybe you're using some shapes, okay? Use those a lot and then, wow, look at that. It's just gonna go right there where I want it. And of course, this is going to be something that you will be changing all throughout in your career with Acrobat Pro. So you'll be exploring all these things. It's okay, so I would delete things all the time. Okay, cool. And then I changed my mind later on, I can always go back to it. So let me click save. And now you can see there's my toolbar, wonderful. Oh, you know what? I wanna actually add in some more stuff. I right click on there. I'm gonna go over to here to customize quick tools. And then I can go back and I can very easily add some more stuff on there. Okay, so if I wanna prepare forms, okay, cool. I'm doing that all the time. I go up there, but guess what? Let's say I change my mind. Maybe there's certain things I don't want in here anymore. Okay, so I'm actually not using the arrow keys anymore. So very simply, I choose it 
and then I can click on this little trash can and it's gonna go away. But now let's say I like these guys here, but I wanna change the order of them. So I can very easily just use these little arrows here. So I trash things all the time. I just bump that over to the far left. I wanna be able to see that. Okay, so this one, I do forms. Yeah, moderately, so let's bring that kind of somewhere in the middle. Okay, so very easy just to kind of change the ordering of things and also add them and also delete them. But there's gonna be some times when you wanna be a little bit more structured with these. So you might wanna have a little divider depending on what individual things that you're working on here. So for example, I might wanna have a little divider between these, right? So if I'm gonna move this over here a little bit. This is gonna be my commenting stuff and then this is going to be over here just for my trash. It's gonna be separated out just like that. Maybe there's gonna be another one for your signatures, for your forms, whatever it's going to be. So then I'll add on another one, cool. Now they're all structured and organized for me in a really nice, easy to read format. So let's check it out. I click save and now you can see nicely structured and organized for me and I can see them all very subtly. You can see the little line there. And I'm pretty happy with that because then I have all my favorite tools easily accessible to me. All right, next thing we're gonna do is talk about how we can customize this set of tools over here on the right-hand side. So you have a lot, a lot of tools to explore. We're gonna be getting through many, many of these in this class, but when you wanna access them, it's as simple as simply clicking on them, but when you right-click on them, you'll notice that there's many options, including, of course, opening them, removing these as shortcuts, moving them up and down if you want to as well, and of course, you can learn more about these individual tools. So if I'm commenting all the time, I right-click, I could say move up, and it's not the most fluid way of doing things. Would be nice if you can click and drag, but you can't do it, so you can try it. Maybe they'll get that in the next uh, version, but and if I don't want to have something on here like that I don't use a lot, then I can very easily remove it. So if I right click on request signatures, I can remove the shortcut and it goes away. All right, now let's go over here to more tools and we'll be able to see, oh, well, here's kind of the mother load of all the tools that I work with. So let's say, for example, I'm using stamps all the time. I can very easily, now I can click and drag this to go over here, okay? And guess what, while I'm here, now I can click and drag this, okay? So there is kind of a backup for you while you're in this window, but not on the front window, okay? So just keep that in mind, okay? The dragging thing does work while you're in this window, but not on the front end. So it does give you a little bit of functionality. And of course, while we're here, you'll notice here's a little X, so I can very easily get rid of these if I want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on that for send to comments, get rid of that, and then maybe bring in accessibility, very important. And then that's there. Okay, amazing, 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 amazing. Okay, then I'll go back to my document and I'll see there's all my tools all set up, ready to go, customized by me for me. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, get your workspace really customized, knowing the things that you may wanna do, having those tools accessible for you. And then of course, knowing that that may change and that's no big deal to make those modifications when it comes up for you. Okay, practice up and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to cover how to create a PDF from multiple documents, from multiple files. So sometimes you're going to have different types of files like a Word document, an Excel document, an image, a PDF, and you wanna bring them into one PDF document, okay? And that's gonna be the case for a lot of you many, many times where it's gonna be just sort of like a hodgepodge of things, but ultimately you want it to culminate into one PDF document. And Acrobat makes it very easy to do. So right now I don't have any documents open here, but I can see all my tools available. Notice I'm in my tools panel. Also notice over here on the right hand side is my create PDF. So either way, I can click on create PDF here or I can click on create PDF here and that's what I'm going to do. So I click on that and notice this very friendly dialog box pops up, create a PDF from any format, pretty cool. So I can then just convert something that's just one document and then just make it into a PDF. Earlier, we saw how we could do it directly from Word, from Excel, 
right? So from any of these other um, office programs you can do, some of you may not have that extension on there. This gives you another way you can do it directly from Acrobat Pro if you want to. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create one from multiple files and I'm going to combine the file. So create a single PDF from multiple files. Notice you also have the option to create multiple PDFs if you want to. So convert multiple files into PDFs at the same time. Oh, okay, maybe you want to do that. Or you can create PDF portfolios, which we're going to explore in just a little bit. Okay, so for right now, let's just go ahead and just say combine files. I'm going to click on next. And then very simply, we're going through this little wizard, I'm just going to add in the files. So I click on add files and it's going to ask me, okay, so what are the files that I want to work with? Now you'll see here, I have a number of different file types that I'm going to bring in. I have two images. I got a word file. I got a few PDFs. I got an Excel document. I got PowerPoint. Whoa, one big happy family all coming together. So I'm just going to kind of marquee over all of these, or you could just do command or control A to select them all, click on open. And then look at that pops right in all ready to go for me to create my one PDF document with several different files in them all right now. Let's just say I love this, but I want to change the order of things a little bit. So let's just play around with the order first of all. So I want to have my PDFs first. So guess what? Just simply click and drag, click and drag be a little more forceful with it. There you go. And then I want to have my images last, just drag that. Okay. All right, cool. Love that. Good to go. Now let's take a look at some other kind of view options that we might want to be working with. So if we look up on top, you'll notice that I have these options here to switch to list view or to keep it into this thumbnail view. If I click on this, notice I get some pretty good options here because not only is it giving me the full name of the document, but it's showing me the size of the document, showing me when it was modified, you know, all that good stuff. So I know, okay, is this what I'm looking at? This is maybe why my file is too big, et cetera. So pretty neat. And then when I change this view, notice it gives me another way to then move them up and down in their order very easily. So I'm gonna go back to my thumbnail view and love that, very good. Now let's take a look at some of our other options that we have here. And guess what? If I don't want this Cuba picture anymore, I can delete it, right? So I just click on remove. There we go. If I want to add in more um, documents of any kind, I can go ahead and add in another file. I can add in a whole folder. I can do it from a scanner, from a web page, from an email, right? It's very, very scalable what we can add on there. All right. So of course you'll want to experiment with that. All right. Now let's just go ahead and take a look at some of our other view options. Notice I can go ahead and just zoom in a little bit. And then, okay, pretty cool. Now I can actually see my document a little bit better. All right, yeah, that's pretty helpful. I like that. And now I can actually see what I'm looking at. It's just the right thing. But now if that's not good enough and you wanted to actually kind of go into these themselves, you'll notice that some of these documents are actually multi-pages and you'll know that as well. So if I go over to here and I double click on this, notice how it kind of spills out to show me two of those pages. Let me double click on this. Cool, two pages there. What about this one? All right, good. And that was just two pages as a blank page. What about that one? Okay, also, good, two sheets there. Good, so if you double click on it again, double click on it again, double click on it again, and then it then collapses to its original state. All right, so if you really wanted to see them, again, just go ahead and double click on them to see what's inside of them. All right, so pretty neat, lots of good stuff you can do here. All right, now the last thing I'm gonna show you is under these options. So when you click on options, you will see the first choice you're gonna get is about file size. Because when we're working with these big, big documents that we're bringing in, if it's gonna have images and multi-page PDFs, et cetera, you may want to make it not so big because maybe you're gonna post it onto a website, maybe you're gonna email it. So Acrobat does give you the choice to then actually make it so it's gonna be a little bit smaller, so it'll optimize those images. Of course, you'll want to um, make sure that when you do publish it, that you didn't degrade any of the quality of the images. So just make sure to check that out. All right, because there's only really three choices. So they don't really give you a ton of kind of nuance around that. Okay, and then you have some other options here, literally other options. Okay, always enable accessibility and reflow. All right, so we're going to talk about accessibility later on, but accessibility 
when you enable that, that's going to allow people who have screen reader devices to be able to access um, all of your, your contents, right? And also tab through all of your content. And most of what we're going to discuss is going to be about having like what we call alt tags on there, alt text on your images, but also making the reflow go in terms of how when people hit tab with their screen reader, it'll just go in the right order. All right. So your documents will need to be set up ahead of time to be able to make that go effectively. Okay. So just keep that in mind if that's a concern for you. All right. Always add bookmarks to the PDF, right? If you have some bookmarks, certainly continue combining if an error occurs, right? That'll really be up to you. Uh, we're going to be talking about PDF portfolios in the next lesson. So don't worry about that right now. And then always delete source files after combining. I don't want to do that, but just know the option is there if I like. So I'm going to click OK. And then finally, I'm ready to combine all of these files into one PDF magically. I click on that and you're going to see it's giving me a nice little status one by one. It's converting things. It's bringing them all together. Notice on the bottom, I got my little green bar to tell me exactly what it's doing. One by one. Very cool. The magic is all happening. And you'll see also it's going to open up the actual program itself to borrow from it to then do the conversion. And this might take a little while just depending on your files and your file size and everything. Now, amazingly, I currently have one file that has 20 pages in it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And then if I scroll down, I'll be able to see everything here. Great. And OK, PDF, PDF. Well, there's a Word document. OK, well, look at that. There's an Excel document. OK, all right, cool. Love that. All right. And then wait for it. And last but not least, there are my beautiful images. Okay, and if I go over here to my pages panel, which we're gonna be exploring in more detail later on, we'll be able to see a lot of the things that we should remember from when we brought them in, and I'm super happy with that. Now, one thing to note is that when you create a PDF from multiple documents, it's going to give it this generic name of binder one. So we will want to save it. So I'll say save as, and then where do I want to save that? It's up to you. Okay, I'll just say combine Landon docs. All right, and then I am good to go. And now I have a PDF that is now mine, created from several different file formats. All right, so they make it very, very easy for you to do. So pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson where we're going to learn how to create portfolios and, in fact, what a portfolio even is. And welcome back, everyone. Hopefully that was successful for you, creating a PDF based off of multiple files and different file types. In this lesson, we're going to learn about portfolios, creating a PDF portfolio. Now, in the last lesson, we learned how we can bring in different file types into one, and it became one giant PDF, all smashed together as one big happy family. But let's say you want to bring in individual documents, but kind of keep them separate. So you might want to have like one separate PDF from another, or maybe a Photoshop file separate from all the other ones, but still create the sort of container and have that container of a PDF portfolio that kind of houses all of those individual documents. And it's going to give you all kinds of different control over them in terms of pagination, in terms of editing, and all kinds of good stuff. All right, so let's just take a look at what the process looks like and then ultimately what the outcome looks like. So similar process is what we did in the last lesson. I'm going to click on Create PDF and come over to here to Multiple Files. But this time, I'm going to choose Create PDF Portfolio. And you can see it gives me a nice little description. Aggregate and organize multiple types of files into a PDF package. Hmm, intriguing. So when I click on next, you'll see a slightly different kind of dialog box pops up. And I will be able to now just simply add files if I want to, or I can add in a whole folder. You can do it from a scanner if you want to. You can also add them in from a web page. Now, if I choose add files, you'll see it's going to be very similar to what I saw before. And I can simply just select them all and I'm good to go. Now, if I choose add folder, kind of nice is that I can just simply choose the folder right there and then it just comes in just like that. So all the contents that are in there. So it actually might be a little bit more streamlined for you 
to do this process. Okay, so very nice. You can see I have PDF, I have PowerPoints, I have PSDs, Illustrator files, right? Word docs. Okay, wow, pretty awesome, all coming together. But now these are all gonna be together, but separate from each other. Now, you'll see that some of this stuff is, you know, relatively similar, right? Where I'll be able to just, you know, move these around. So bam, there's my Photoshop file is first, and let's go ahead and bring this one over here right after it. Okay, very cool. Now, you'll also notice that when I move my mouse over it, I'm gonna get some options here, like to delete, okay? So if I go to this one, I'll be able to delete it, but I can also kind of expand it. It doesn't really do much, be able to just kind of see it just like that. Maybe I wanna read a little bit better. But then if I wanna kind of go inside of it, notice it says expand six pages, I can very easily do that to be able to see what's inside of that PowerPoint. And if I want to bring it back again, I can click on that one more time. And as we saw in the last lesson, I could also just double click it. Okay, so either way, you got lots of control there. Now, just like how we saw when we created our combined PDFs, I have different options for viewing. So notice I'm in my thumbnail view. I can click over to here to my list view. And then this will tell me again, kind of different sizes for me. And then again, I can remove something. I can move them up and down. Okay, great. See when they're modified, lots of good stuff here. I'm gonna go back to my thumbnail view and I'm pretty happy, All right? But just note before I click on create, I can then also say, hey, let's just add on some more files or I forgot about one. I can very easily do that. So just keep that in mind, you're not stuck. So I am good to go. I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna click on create and we'll watch it. And amazingly, you will see something a little bit different. Number one, my document name is no longer a binder, it is a portfolio. And then you'll also see something a little bit different. Notice all of my individual files, they stay individual. It doesn't look like pages here. So if I go over here to this PDF and I double click on it, notice how it opens up to its own little separate file right there. Okay, let's just try another one. How about this PowerPoint? Go to that, all right, and I'll have to actually preview this because this is from another yeah, there you go, another file format altogether, but okay, fantastic, great. I can go back to that and then I can very easily go back to where I just was. All right, so you'll be able to do the same thing with all the rest of these. So when you send this out, everybody will have all of these things packaged together in one document, but have several different documents and file formats inside of it, okay? So pretty neat, okay? So some of you who are you know working on literally like portfolios, like you are actually wanting to show a portfolio and you want to kind of present it and send it out and collaborate in a more kind of uh, streamlined way rather than sending out several individual files, portfolios are the way to go. All right, so practice that, have fun, and we'll see you in the next lesson. And welcome back everybody. In this next lesson, we're gonna get into organizing. Organizing our documents, large or small. Acrobat makes it nice and easy to insert pages, to move around pages, to delete, crop, extract, all kinds of good stuff. So we're gonna start off with our little side panel expanded out where I can actually see my page thumbnails. Earlier, we showed you how to get to that. You can see pretty easy to do. Now, we're gonna see how we can organize by both using our page thumbnails, but also by using our organized pages panel over here. And you're gonna see there's a lot of overlap. So they're very generous with giving you more than one way to do something, but not having to go back to both back and forth because they share and overlap some of that capacity. All right. so. Just want to say, first of all, that right clicking goes a long way in this program. So if you right click, a lot of options just pop up here. Wow, insert pages, extract. Oh my God, look at that cut, copy, paste. Wow, so many cool things. But also notice that if I click on this guy right up here, you're going to see that a lot of the same options appear there. So maybe you're not a right clicker. Maybe your computer doesn't have right click. Don't worry about it. You're going to have a lot of the same options available to you. Okay. Now, You'll also see that other options are available to you just kind of like by default, like to delete the pages, to insert pages, and also check it out. You can also rotate the pages if you want to as well. So let me just go ahead and first just delete this page. I click on that. 
It's going to ask me, hey, are you sure you want to delete the page? I'm going to say, okay. And it goes away. Pretty cool. All right. And that's gone. So maybe I didn't need that anymore. It's gone. Don't need it. And I'm good to go. Now, let's see what other things we can do. If I right click, you can see here I can insert pages. And guess what? I can insert from a file that already exists from my clipboard that maybe I've copied or maybe even just a blank page. So let's go back to one of our documents and one of our folders that we worked with before from file. And let me just go ahead and now bring in my wisdom testimonials. Okay, where do I want to put this in? I'm going to put this in after page two. I click OK. And look at that. That pops right in. Love that. Amazing. I'm so happy. That was so easy. Four pages brought in. No problem. Okay, let's try out a few other things that we can do. Let's see about extracting a page. What does that mean? Let's say I want to extract this page out. Actually, let's let's do two pages. I want both of these pages extracted out into another document. So I click on extract pages. You can see extract which one. It's the one that I've already selected. So that makes it pretty easy. And what would you like to do? Do you want to delete pages after extracting? No, I do not. Do you want to extract pages at separate files? Well, what they're asking me here is, do I want each of these to be two separate files, which I do not. So I'm going to click OK. And now, guess what? I now have two pages with both of these guys in there that I just extracted out, one and two, and the other one remains intact. Very cool, right? So very easily you can do that. You like something and you want to just export it someplace else, just right click, does the trick. Okay, so you can see also some other options here is replace the page. So if I decide, listen, I don't want this page anymore, I can right click and just replace the page with something else if I want to, right? So let's bring this up here and then which one do I want to do? Okay, I click okay. And then are you sure you want to replace them? I say yes, okay, great. And then just replace it with all of the pages that were part of that document. Nice, super easy. Okay, so just think about that. Think about that kind of functionality that you have. And also just see how easy it is just by simply right clicking and then following suit. Deleting pages, notice how this is like a dot, dot, dot. This is going to give me the option to potentially not only just do a selected one, but I might want to do a range, right? So let's just now do page three, four and five. So this time I'm going to get rid of all the ones that I just brought in. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to say yes. And now those are gone. As soon as they came, as easy as they go. All right, no issues at all. Thank you very much. All very happy with that. All right, let's continue on with some of our other organization options here. Crop pages, what does that mean? Click on that and like, whoa, this is interesting. Maybe you wanna crop certain parts of your page out. Like you, it's gonna allow you to literally like choose which parts that you may or may not want. Okay, so if I now go ahead and just expand this, I want you to notice my little box comes in, a little box comes out, just like that. Notice how it's going up and down, up and down. How about from the bottom? Notice that that's coming in. So let's just say this little area there, I don't want that anymore. I can crop that out. And same thing, left. All right, let's bring that in. All right, pretty cool. So, all right, I'm on my way. And now, just for right now, I'm just gonna keep it as is. Click OK, and now, look at that, no longer do I see that area anymore, okay? Very easily just to crop something out. You know, and this, this isn't an image, so to speak. This is actual, like, a page with some text and everything like that. I'm able to just kind of crop that to only show what I want. Might be a lot more work if you don't know Photoshop or InDesign to be able to do that. So pretty cool to be able to do that very easily. But now if you go back to crop pages, you can also bring it back, okay? So if I change my mind, just know that I can bring this back down again and all that stuff is going to reappear again. So I'm now going to just cancel that because I like what I just did there. Excellent. Let's now continue on with some of our organization options. And let's go over to here to rotate pages, okay? So I don't really see too much what I would rotate, but you never know. Basically, you're making it go from portrait in this case to landscape. All right, so let me just go to here. And earlier we saw how we can do it this way. No problem. But if I right click and say rotate pages here, notice I'm going to be able to get a lot of those same options. And I can also choose a range of pages 
that I want to rotate, okay? I'm gonna cancel this, but I just want you to know if there is a case where you're gonna have a range of things that you want to rotate, a range of pages you wanna rotate, you're gonna see it's gonna be relatively easy to do just by right clicking and also using our little icons here. All right, let's just try out some other things here. Page transition. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight everything in this case. I'm just gonna go ahead and just do Control or Command A, right click, and then I'm gonna choose page transitions. And what we're talking about here is when you're looking at something in slideshow mode, you may actually want it to transition to make it kind of just fade in or fade out into something and just by simply choosing one of these transitions. So when I choose, for example, fade, right? What is the speed do I want it to be? I'll just say medium, okay, very cool. And then I don't think I needed to auto flip after some seconds. Basically, if you have people just, maybe it's going at, you're in a trade show and you want it to just go and go and go, you may want it to automatically just progress on its own. And you can say, all right, good, 10 seconds, that's people's attention span, let it go and go and go, all right? And then the page range, all pages in the document, pages selected in the pages panel, totally up to you, right? I selected everything, so it's gonna be the same thing, both this choice and this choice, and I click okay. All right, now, later on, we're gonna be looking at what it's gonna look like when we present it in slideshow mode, but now that is actually built in to the document to be able to then transition in such a way, all right? So hold tight on that, we'll get to it momentarily. All right, so now I'm gonna deselect everything. Let's take a look at some of our other options. All right, let's come over to here to our page label. And you'll see here about page numbering mostly, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of some of the stuff that was pre-built from before. And it's asking me, okay, so what's the page numbering that you want on your entire page um, document, right? Or selected pages within your document, right? So you can do that and you can also do a range of pages, however you want to do that. Now we're talking about our pagination. So if we look here, they give us pretty much like all different styles of pagination that you might wanna do. Sometimes you're gonna have just sort of like an introduction page, like a, like a preface that might be like the first two or three pages, and that's gonna be separate. So that range that you would choose would only apply just to that like two or three pages you've chosen. So then you might wanna say, hey, there's my prefix, and then bam, you're good to go, right? And it's gonna start with whatever pages you've chosen. But maybe you don't want that at all. Maybe you wanna have no page numbers on there, so you would choose something different there. So let's take a look at what that might look like. I'm gonna go over to here to page three, four, and five. I'm gonna right click on it, go over here to my page labels, and then from here, it's just gonna be the pages that I've selected. I'm gonna say begin new section. And then from here, it's gonna start, okay, at page one, because these other ones don't really matter, right, for me because they're covers. So I click okay. And now you can see how it actually starts, one, two, three, just like that. And then these guys, right click, page labels, all right, and then this is gonna be just for the selected. All right, I'm gonna say none for these guys. Click okay, and you can see, very cool, right? So it doesn't actually show as individual pages there. Okay, for me, it just starts with that. All right, so pretty neat, giving you all the control in the world, however you like to show your pagination. All right, let's continue on. So many more options here. What pages you wanna print, just print that page, great. You can go ahead and do that, and it's gonna pop right up giving you, of course, the option to print all your document pages right there, just the current one, and all kinds of options within printing. And also note that the file print also goes a long way for you, pretty much literally the same thing, if you like to do that. But what's nice about this is that because I right-clicked on this particular page, I can then just choose that page, and it's gonna be automatically set up just to do that particular page, right? So kind of nice. Check out some other options here. And this, I'm um, looking over here where we have this reduce page thumbnail, right? Just really, it's gonna make it a little bit smaller. So we can see, oh, now I can see everything here. All right, let's now expand that. Enlarge, cool, maybe I wanna get even bigger. Okay, kinda nice, let me make this a little bit wider. Maybe it's gonna get even bigger, right? So 
lots of options for us to work with here. Okay, so really, really pretty neat. Okay, and then finally on this section, let's go over here to page properties. And you'll see this is gonna be about your tab order. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit more about this when we get to accessibility, but that's what we're talking about. You'll notice here, choose one of the above options to set the tab order for tabbing through items on a page. So typically that tab order has to do with people who are visually impaired, who are using screen readers, and they need to tab through each individual part to read through it so the screen reader reads to them. That's what the tab orders are all about. So you may come back to this later on when you're working with the accessibility functionality, okay? So just keep that in mind for later on. Now, let's just do a few things inside of our Organized Pages panel. So we go over to here, and we're gonna see, maybe this is a little bit better way for us to work, potentially, right? But notice, we do have a lot of the same options. Here's Extract, okay, here's Insert, Replace. Okay, we'll talk about splitting in just a second. But you also know that I can move my mouse over these things, and I get, oh, that's pretty neat, right? I can rotate, I can delete, and guess what? All these other options appear for me to work with. Wow, so many things to choose from. But now I decide, you know what? I kind of want to reorder these. You know, this one actually should be first. Well, that's easy. Just drag and drop. Oh man, this maybe is a little bit better of a way for certain things, including moving some pages around. Now you'll see in the lower right, I'm gonna have the option to make my pages bigger and smaller, which is also making it easier for me to work with. Right, and compared to what I just did inside of my page thumbnails, to enlarge the thumbnails, to have to right click and do that, a little tedious, but here I'm able to actually expand that out. Okay, very cool, or make it smaller and likewise. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is this split. Now using the split option is very similar to working with extract, but it's maybe a little bit more kind of a batch type of operation, meaning we're gonna be able to do lots more a little bit faster. So let's say, for example, I have all of these pages here and I want to just split them up, right? By basically saying hey, all of you guys are going to go into a separate document potentially. So when I choose split, you can see that it gives me a number of different choices here. How am I splitting them up by number of pages, by file size, right, by top level bookmarks, right? My guess is that you're either gonna do it by number of pages or by top level bookmarks. We haven't spoken about bookmarks yet, but maybe that's how your document is organized and then you wanna split it up that way. But I wanna make all of these just go into one, two, three, four, eight different split documents, right? Essentially, it's just going to put it out someplace else eight different times, eight different files, right? Based off of these eight pages. Now, if you go over to here, your output options, you're gonna see, it's gonna ask us, okay, first of all, where do you want me to output this? Where do you want me to split this? I can put it onto a folder on my computer or the same folder selected at start. Okay, so let me just go ahead and just do a folder on my computer. All right, I'll put that on my desktop, new folder. Okay, I'll just say split me. All right, I'm gonna say select folder. Good, there it is, that's where it's gonna end up. And then file name, you can see, okay, so what would you like to actually label as your file. So you'll see you can add label and numbering before the original name if you wanna do that. So the original name of this is HP Catalog, or you can use a label and then put whatever you want in there, okay? So I'll just call this split, and then you can see here, use separator between original name and label. That's great, I'm not gonna overwrite anything. And then I click okay, and now I'm ready to split all these. So when I click on split, you're gonna see the document has been successfully split into eight documents, okay? I click okay, and now very simply, I'm gonna go over here to split me, and you can see, oh, look at that. And there it is, split one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Cool, and if I were to look at my preview, there it is, just one page, and then here's my next one, one page. So again, it's like an extract, but maybe a little more of a batch operation. All right, so let me close this out, come back to here, you'll see, Organizing your content is very, very simple. And organizing can mean so many, so many different things, okay? Whether we are inserting pages, replacing pages, extracting out pages, putting on different page labels, 
so many different things. And it's so great that you can do it directly inside of your page thumbnails if you want to. And you can also go over here to your organized pages panel. All right. So I encourage you, please practice that, get comfortable with it, and we'll see you in the next video. Many times you're going to be scanning a document and the document is full of images and text and Acrobat can't read it and no other program can read it. So what we need to do is use a technology called OCR, Optical Character Recognition, to be able to make the text that's been scanned as an image into readable text and also make the images that you see here also selectable, deletable, all that stuff. Essentially, we're gonna be breaking the document apart. That is now one static image with just one layer of content into several different boxes and layers to make it so it's more, more kind of malleable for us. Okay, so there's a few different ways to do that. Now, if you look on the right-hand side, you're gonna see that there's this option for scan and OCR, right? That's the term that we just learned about. So let's go ahead and just check that out. If we go over here to scan and OCR, you're gonna see that a number of options appear on top. And you're gonna see there is this recognize text and there's also enhance. My experience, I've seen them work comparable to each other. I feel like enhance might go the next level if recognize text does not work. But we can check this out and see what it says, scan document, and you can see it recognizes the text and you can click enhance. If you go to recognize text in this file, notice it also says recognize text, right? Now you're gonna see a little bit of difference in terms of your settings here. So you can see this is going to allow you to do this current page, what language it's gonna be, what is the output for searchable image, searchable text and image? Okay, great, good, good, lots of options there. If we go back to enhance, you'll see scan documents, what are our settings here? And this goes a little bit deeper into what we can do with our images, okay? So you might wanna say, hey, listen, I want the images to be as high quality as possible. And then notice it's also going to recognize the text. I click okay, and then I'm ready to do enhance. Okay, so for both of these options, you're gonna see pretty much the same output. So I'm just gonna click on Enhance because I'm concerned about my images, all right? Staying within the Enhance um, tool here. Okay, so watch what happens now. I'm gonna click on Enhance, and down at the bottom, you see it's optimizing, optimizing, it's using its OCR technology, and now not a whole lot happens, and that's essentially what we want to have happen. But when I try to select my type here, see that? It is now selectable. And if I just do like, let's say control F to look up, let's just say center, notice it is now searchable, All right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just close this out without saving, say no, go back here, okay? And I just want you to again notice that this is not selectable, this is not searchable. But I'm gonna show you a slightly different way to do this in case you don't wanna go in this direction here. So if I just go to the simple edit PDF tool, which we're gonna spend quite a bit of time in the next few exercises, you're gonna see that I'm also gonna have the ability to do some similar things. Okay, as soon as I click on that, wow, it changes for me, pretty amazing, into a series of checkboxes without having to really do too much at all. Okay, why is that happening? Because if you look over here in the lower right, we have this recognized text, option already checked, when I click on settings, you can see it's very similar to that. Now it didn't do the best job because you'll see that my font is kind of all over the place, right? I've decided that it was this Comic Sans font, you know, all that good stuff there. So know what your options are as you're doing this and just kind of test out what the best output's gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close this one more time. I'm gonna go back to land and scan again. All right, and then I'm gonna go over here to my scan and OCR, and then let's just give recognized text a shot. Go back over to here to my settings, current page, that's great. This I'm gonna say edible text and image. Click okay, and then recognize text, finally. Let's see what that does this time comparatively. And I think it's a little bit better. All right, and now you'll see if I'm able to select all these, and I'm pretty much good to go. All right, so, we're gonna be using a little bit of this document and a few other documents moving forward to learn about what we can do with our editing tool, okay? So try this out with other documents that you have that have been scanned, they are images, and you wanna be able to make them searchable, 
movable, and editable, essentially. All right, so pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In the last exercise, we worked on scanning a document to make it so it has searchable and editable text. And I can verify that again just by highlighting my text. I couldn't do that before. Okay, you can see here this is also highlightable. Okay, that's great. All right, and some of these other elements we're going to see in a little bit. We can also select them, move them around, etc. Certain things we can do, certain things we cannot do because we're not in the right tool. All right, so we haven't really talked a lot about what tools are available for us. Now we're gonna get into a little more sophistication of what our tools are available. So I'm gonna close out of the tool that I'm currently in, which is my OCR and scan. And I'm gonna jump over here to my edit PDF tool here. And you're gonna see that this is the mother load. So many, so many different options within edit PDF. I click on that and you're gonna see immediately I get this lovely toolbar that appears up on top with lots and lots of options, even some options that are hidden. And you'll also notice that a lot of my objects here now have these little bounding boxes around them. And I can definitely, definitely edit them and you know select them and do all kinds of good stuff here. All right now, you'll notice that when I select something, I have a new toolbar over here that should look familiar to some of you. That's going to show me my font, my font size, and all kinds of other font formatting options, okay? including bulleting, alignment, my line spacing, right, my horizontal scaling, different things over here. Okay, so this is going to be an incredible, incredible tool for you once you actually do your scanning, or if you just have another document that you want to make changes to, you can very, very easily do that. So. Just on the most basic levels, let's just say I want to just change this, just the basic text of it. So I'll come over to here and say, okay, listen, we're now in 23 countries. So I change that 20 to a three and bam, super easy. That's great, all right? Maybe I changed our phone number. Maybe we changed the website. All of this now is selectable and editable. Pretty amazing. Now. One thing you might notice is that when I click on it, I'm not really getting like a real font, right? Notice over here in my little context pane on the right-hand side, I'm not seeing like a real font. I'm getting this Arial Bold 5829. It's Adobe really doing its best to kind of match us halfway with our system fonts. So you may have to actually go in inside and select it and then make a change to the font that you want it to be. So just to keep it simple, I am just going to choose Arial. Right, and I'm going to do the same thing for here. I'm just going to select in, select in the box and just choose Control A. Right, and then I'm going to choose Arial. And you'll just see me just do this a few times. All right, this whole box here, you can see there that is. All right, and then just notice I can also do AR and notice that just comes right in. I just type that in. That's going to save you some time as well. All right, I'll just do a couple more so you can see. I click on the box AR and it takes me right to Arial. Pretty neat. Okay, and then come over to here. Again, AR. AR, not Shift R. There we go. All right, so now you can see this is Arial. Arial, not Arial. You can make those changes on your own and certainly change it to, to a different font if you want to. All right, so pretty nice. Okay. And all of this stuff too, by the way, has its own line spacing and all this good stuff too. If you want to play around with that, you have that kind of control now. Okay. I mean, it's amazing to think that at some point, just a few minutes ago, this was a static image. And now with the miracle of OCR technology, I can now edit it using my editing toolbar and all the amazing features built into it. Okay. So let's just take a look at some of our other options here. Notice I can select this image. I can select this group of images here. That's how it came in. And then you'll notice maybe on other pages, don't have any other images, but if I did, it would show it there. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at images in just a little bit, but I want you to see at the very basics of how we can edit our text, okay? Because you know this stuff we've done before in other programs, but it might be slightly different for you. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video and the lesson just on that for right now. Maybe some of you need to practice a little bit more and then we'll see you in the next lesson. We're now working in a different document called London P1. 
And uh, we're gonna use this document to explore how our images work. Now that we have this scanned in, or maybe yours already was made from scratch with our images, we can see what kind of features we have working with images. So let me just go ahead and zoom in a little bit, just a tad, so you can see I have some images here, some images there. And notice um, when I'm not in my editing toolbar, I cannot actually select them the way that I want to. So I need to go to edit PDF, and now automatically I start seeing these bounding boxes, and I can very easily select these each individually, including my text, of course, and I'll notice all of these are all selectable. Now, what are some things I might wanna do here? If you select them, I can certainly resize these, right? Notice what that's gonna do. Okay, and of course I might need to get rid of whatever's behind it, right? I can very easily do that. I'm gonna undo that, just Control or Command Z. Notice I can also rotate this as well. Note if I want to do that, no problem there. Okay, and then of course, if I hit delete, I can go ahead and delete these and delete that as well. Okay, so if you don't want them there, and if you wanna move them someplace else, they're all now movable. Okay, so very cool, you have the option now to really control this document like you would in any other program like Word or PowerPoint or whatever programs you're working in, even Photoshop. Now, as I've said in earlier lessons, right-clicking goes kind of a long way with this. So if I right-click on these, you're gonna see I have lots of options here, some familiar ones like cut, copy, delete, okay? And there is select all, right? Notice that selects everything, you don't want that. Um, and then also notice here is create link. We're gonna talk about links in a little bit. But let's just talk about more um, image-centric types of things, like cropping. If I wanted to crop this, for example, I can very easily crop it. So if I move my mouse right over here and I just kind of swat, slide over like that, notice I've now just cropped that out. Okay, so let's say I wanna crop out something down here, for example. I'm going to just right-click, go to crop, and let's say I just don't want this clock. Very easily, I just swipe over like that, and now that's gone. Okay, and I can always bring that back to just know that when you're cropping something, you can always bring it back as well. Okay, it's not permanently gone. Okay, now let's take a look at some other options. If I right click again, I'm gonna go over to here now to replace image. Okay, because I wanna have a new image in here, but I wanna have it be replaced with a new image, but then also fit inside the same exact box in the same exact place. So if I right click now, let me get out of this. If I right click now, and I just say replace image. I'm just gonna replace it with this London Crossroads. I double click, wait for it, and bam, it just fits right in there. Okay, pretty neat. So a lot of great options. Let's just check out a few more. Some of these are gonna be very similar to what we did, but a little more kind of automated, like you wanna flip something. Cool, maybe you get a whole different look there. Let's go back to it again. Nice, you can go ahead and flip that. Maybe I wanna flip it vertically. Okay, pretty neat. You can do things very, very quickly. All right, let's do that one more time, and there we are. Okay, now let's check out some of the other options. Just notice here also that you can edit these in real time. So if you are working with Photoshop or you're working with Microsoft Paint, if I were to click on that, that's also going to just open right up, and you'll be able to edit it, save it, and then you'll be able to see the real editing output show up here inside of your document. Okay, and then finally, this arrange will allow you to actually change the stacking order of it. If you have them um, one on top of the other and you wanna change the stacking order of it, you can very easily change those. Okay, so you'll see, even though we are working with Adobe Acrobat Pro and not Photoshop or PowerPoint or Word, you see that we do have quite a bit of functionality once we sort of break it free from being just a static image and if you wanna bring in your own images, you'll see that it's quite easy to do, okay? Now that said, let's see very quickly how we can add in our own images because now we are just very simply editing images that already exist. Now let's just take a look at a part of the toolbar that we have not explored yet. We're gonna be going through all these in just a moment, but let's now just click on add image, all right? And let's just say I'm gonna bring this image in and bam, there it is. And now I can treat that just like anything else and move it around, do whatever I want, and then maybe I'm going to replace the map with this image here. Okay, that's great. And then maybe I get rid of this and do whatever I wanna do with it, okay? So just know you have a lot of options here, just like how we would with any other program, be able to add images, right? We can do to a certain extent, we can 
edit our images. We can rotate them, resize them, remove them, crop them, do all kinds of great things. All right, so pause the video. Please practice that with whatever kind of files, whatever kind of images you got, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In our last lesson, we looked at the add image option within our editing toolbar. Now we're going to learn about how we can just add in basic text. Okay, that's going to be something you'll be doing quite a bit. This particular document obviously had a bunch of text, but there's this big old blank spot up here that I need to fill in with my own text. So how do I do that? Again, just simply go over to here to add text, and it's going to give me this nice little kind of hovering mouse with an A on it and a little I bar. And I could just simply click and drag to make some space for it. And I could just start typing in, right? So I'll just say news letter. I'm going to go to the next line, hit enter 2021. Actually, you know what? Let me go back up here. I'm going to say this is going to be fall 2021. Okay. Pretty cool, just like anything else. But now if I wanna make this a little bit bigger, I just highlight it. I'm gonna come over to here to my format pane on the right side and simply just add up my text there. Okay, pretty cool. All right, make that a little bit bigger. My font size, okay, cool. But you know what? I'm not a big fan of that font, so I can very easily change that to whatever I want. So I'm gonna choose maybe Gil Sands. Okay, I like that, nice and blocky. And let's make this also bigger, all right? And I'm also gonna make that Gil Sands. Remember, I could just type out GI and then bam, that comes up. I like that. And this one's not gonna be quite as big. Very cool. Now, all of these could, of course, you can change the colors of them. So I'm just gonna click on my little color box right there and then notice all the colors I have options for. And I can make that white, pretty cool. Let's do that same thing here. Make that white. And then for this one, maybe I want to make this a slightly different color. So I click on that and you'll notice how there's this option for other color. And this can pretty much take me to any color you could think of. Okay, so these are my basic colors here, but I can also change my RGB value if you know what that's going to be. And then you can also just change whatever colors you want. So right, so I'll make this kind of a nice little bright yellow so you can really see it. Okay, and there you go. All right, so there's a lot, a lot, a lot we can do just with our basic levels of things. Now, let's see what we can do with some of these other things here. So earlier we discussed how, yeah, we can put bullets in there if we want to. I'm not going to do that, so let's undo that. We can also do numbering if we want to do that. I'm going to undo that. Okay, and then, of course, I can use my alignment here. Right alignment, left alignment, center, etc. Bring that back. Okay, then I also have here is my line spacing. So if I click on that now, notice how that makes the line spacing a little bit bigger. I'll bring this down. That makes it a little bit tighter. Okay, bring it down even more, even more tight. Okay, so you really do have that kind of control. You can even put in whatever your kind of decimals in. If you want to, if you just want to make it very, very precise, you can just do 1.1 and notice how that just ratcheted up a tiny, tiny bit. All right, now... Um, you also may have some things like your paragraph spacing after, okay? So like you have your paragraph spacing after for something like this inside of this. Now, in order for me to leave where I just was right now, I need to actually go out of this add text option and come over to here, right? To where I want to edit, right? Or wherever I want to edit and then execute. So you kind of have to leave the tool, so to speak, right? Because before I was adding text, which is fine, right? It was kind of just live and active at that moment. But if I want to go and edit something else, then I have to, again, sort of leave and go to the correct tool, okay? So now if I have this highlighted here, let's just see what we can do. I might want to change some of these options here. So let's just see, oh, look at that. I was able to control, look at that, the space after this paragraph, okay? So if it's not coming in perfect, which a lot of times it may not, why? Because you've scanned it or somebody else worked on it. I have all that control in the world and I can be very consistent across the board with all my stuff by knowing these kind of metrics as well. Okay, so some other options might be your horizontal scaling, right? So let's just maybe make 2021 a little bit wider, if you will, kind of give it some kind of beefiness, make it look a little bit different. Let's try fall. Let's make that a little beefier. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Possibly if I do it with newsletter, 
see what happens. Ah, we have a problem. But guess what? I can always resize this and then I make the text box fit and I also move this over here and then move that up. Okay, pretty nice. Very good. That looks a lot better, a little more interesting for me to work with. Okay. So a lot of these things you're going to see are relatively straightforward, right? If you've worked in any other type of desktop publishing program before, you'll see there's really not much difference there. Okay. So really, you know, you want to play around with these. Okay. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you just um, at the end a little bit, and we're going to see this potentially in some other um, aspects of the program is working with alignment. Okay, so if these are not perfectly aligned, which they kind of are, but I might want to make them aligned. So if I were to just bring this down a little bit and I'm going to hold down my shift key, select both of these hiding inside of my format options is this little alignment options here. What I want to do is align the top and then bam, that makes it a perfect fit. Okay, so when you're working with all these things here, notice how this and this are not perfectly aligned. I might want to say, hey, listen, let's align this to the top. Okay. That's so much better. I don't want to have to eyeball that. I want to have Acrobat do all the work for me. Okay, so a lot, a lot of really neat options within Acrobat and hopefully not that foreign or unfamiliar or challenging for you. Okay, so pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Let's now talk about how we can add on headers and footers. Now, this is a continuation of the conversation we were having with our edit PDF toolbar. So let's go ahead and bring that up so we can see what our options are, including the ability to add a header and footer. So you can see there it is sandwiched in between all these other options here. And if I want to add on a header and footer, if I want to edit a header and footer, if I want to do all kinds of different modifications to my header and footer, it's going to be right here. So just understand what a header and footer is going to allow us to do and allow us to add on page numbers, maybe a date, maybe just a running bit of text that we want to continue on from one page to another to another, right? But we also have the ability to do it from the top of the document, which is the header, and to the bottom of the document, which is going to be the footer. So let's see what we can do to accomplish these goals. So notice when I click on that, you're going to see here's an option to add my header and footer. Here's the option to update it if it already exists, or I can simply remove it all together. So let's see what we can do. Let's click on add. And you'll notice this dialog box pops up quite busy, but also very intuitive and very logical. You'll see over here, I have this whole section here, all for my header stuff. And you'll see another section down below, all for my footer stuff. And we have left, center, and right. So let's go ahead and see what we can do to put some things in here. So I'm just going to say now, summer 2021. Actually, I notice it says fall, so I can very easily change that to fall 2021. Not too bad. All right, and then in the center here, I'm gonna put in the date. So I click on that, I'm gonna say insert today's date. And we're gonna see that that's gonna kind of backfire on us a little bit. And you're gonna see what I'm gonna mean in just a second. Now you're gonna see in the lower right, I'm going to choose insert page number. So I click on that and now I'm gonna click down below to see everything that I've done. You can see, bam, there I am, fall 2021. And then you can see there it is, 618. But I don't really like that date format. So I'm gonna have a bit of a problem here because if you look over here, I have this page number and date format. Watch what happens now when I click on that and I make the change to let's just say a different date format, I click okay. Does it change down below? No, it doesn't. So you want to actually choose your format before you actually bring in the date. So now I'm going to choose this. I'm going to go over here to my date format and let's just say, all right, bam, I'm going to do that one a little bit longer. And then notice while I'm here, I also have my page number format. So I can choose some of these things here, choose some of these things here. Let me go ahead and just click okay for right now. Say insert date. Now I can see what I'm looking at. All right. Is that what I want? No, it's not what I want because that's very European, even though we are Landon, we're not London. So let's change that to, uh, let's go to month, month, date, date. Okay, click okay. And then I insert my date and okay, very good. That's exactly how I wanted to read. We'll change the size in just a little bit. Now, I also wanna have my page number set up. So again, good idea, 
change the format first to what you want it to be, then insert the page number, okay? A little bit quirky um, of a design and engineering from Adobe's side, but we know how to work around that now. So I click on that and I decide what is the page formatting that I want. Do I want it to have the word page in there? Do I not want it to have the word page in there? Do I want it to show page one of three, of five, or whatever it is? You can make it do that. So that's what I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna actually say page one of N, all right? And it's gonna start page number one. Okay, that's excellent. Click okay. And now I'm gonna put that right there on the right-hand side, insert page number, and now it shows up. And you can see, there it is down the bottom. Bit of a problem, I'm gonna fix that momentarily. But you can see, all right, we're on our way. Now, let's see what we can do to now customize our header and footer a little bit more and also control the layout and spacing and all that good stuff. So up on top here, you will see all my options for font and size. So I'm gonna click on that. And then let's just choose Arial Bold. Okay, let's make that a little bit bigger. Okay, very nice. I can see that there, not too bad. I, of course, I can change the color if I want. Now. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna play around with the margins a little bit, especially with this bottom one, because notice how close it is to all of my letterhead stuff. So guess what happens now when I go up or down? You'll notice how that changes up or down. So let's go ahead and make that a little bit further away from the edge, and also gonna make that go a little bit further out to the right so it's aligned with the edge of my letterhead. And I'll do the same thing with the left, so bam, that's gonna go over there. So all the control you have there is really, really nice and it keeps things nice and consistent because all of the font choices I chose and applied are now going to go according to what I see down below, all right? Now, let's see what other options we can do here. Now that I, I love this, I'm very happy with it, I can actually save this header and footer for future documents if I want to, pretty neat. So. When I say save settings now, I'm gonna click on that and just say, okay, header and footer newsletter, okay? I click okay. And now you'll see here, I have these save settings, right? And there that is. And I'm doing that so I can reuse this over and over and over again for future documents, okay? So let's go ahead and click okay. And now you can see there it is. Bam, it's right up on top. Okay, what about at the bottom? And you can see, okay, page one of two. And then notice, great, it repeats. And then I go to the bottom and it says, okay, page two of two. Wonderful, it's great. But now let's see that applied in another document altogether. So let's open up to a file that we worked with in a previous exercise. I'm gonna go over here to my London P1. And then there this is, that's great. And I'd like to save some time and apply that same header and footer that I did on this last document with my land and hotel onto this. I wanna save a little bit of time. So notice that my edit PDF toolbar is not activated, so I have to activate that. And then very simply, I go back to header and footer, I'm gonna say add, and then there it is, save settings, and in my dropdown, I should see, look at that, header and footer newsletter, and look at that everything pops right in. And if I wanted to, I can control all the variables here because maybe this is gonna be a slightly different one. Maybe I wanna put this over here on the far right, just cutting and pasting that. Maybe this is gonna go in the center, okay? And for these, of course, I might need to adjust my margins a little bit. And then for this one, it might be a little bit more, okay? So I can play around with that. Okay, cool, but it did still save me a little bit of time and I am keeping things consistent and branded. All right, so I'm pretty much good to go there. I click OK, and wow, amazing. Love that. So you can go back and forth between documents and saving and sharing your headers and footers. So you'll see pretty easy to apply, pretty easy to manipulate, and also to share with other documents. All right, so go ahead and pause the video practice this on these files and also your own, and we will see you in the next lesson. Have fun. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to work with links, web links and email links. And you can see that Acrobat actually works quite well 
with applying the links, but also looking for things that are URLs on the page and making them automatically links. So just like we've been working with in previous exercises, you're going to see that the links option are going to be inside of our edit PDF little panel here. So I have that closed and I'm going to open that up and you're going to see that here is the option for link right there in the middle. And you'll see that there's a lot of options in there, add or edit web or document link. So if I just want to add something in, I can very easily do that. We'll do that in just a little bit. You can auto create web links. Oh, it's going to find links that are in there and it's going to say, Hey, you know, I noticed that has a www in there, a com or something like that. Whatever's on there, you can also remove them if you want to. And then you can also, it's going to find all the links that are on the page and you'll be able to append them one by one. And then here you can just want to look at all the links that you have. You can do that as well. So all your options for links are going to be right here. Now in an earlier lesson, I talked to you about how we can make things into links right directly on the page as well. So let's just start off with that. So I have an image here and if I right click on that, you'll notice there's an option for me to create a link just based on that selection. That's pretty great. So I click on that and it's going to take me to this create link dialog box. So very clearly it asked me, well, what my link type, do you want to have a visible rectangle around it? How much do you want to communicate to your viewers and to your audience that this is in fact something special? So notice I can say visible rectangle and then my line style can be dashed, underlined or whatever. And then of course I can change the color of that if I like as well. But I'm going to say invisible triangle. Notice that gets grayed out. And then my highlight style, you'll be able to see when somebody mouses over it. Do you want it to kind of like communicate back to them? All right. And then again, there's my line thickness if I am choosing my link type. All right. Now, when I'm ready to actually make this to a link, it's going to ask me, well, what is going to be the action that you want to have happen? So you will see that there's actually quite a bit that you can do, not just a regular old web link, but you can go to a page. If you want to go directly to a page within your document, you can open up to a file if you want to. So click on this to view our employee orientation. Click on this to learn more about X, Y, and Z, to open up a glossary, something like that. But it's going to open up to another document altogether. And then, of course, we have the good old reliable open to web page. So that's what we're going to do right now. And I'm going to click on that, click on next. And it's going to ask me, okay, well, what is the URL? So I'm just going to type out www, I'll say learnit.com. And then I click OK. And then when we publish that, that's going to be ready to go. So you'll see that once I click close and I'm out of here, we'll see that this is going to be a link. Now, certain things you won't be able to necessarily click on, or let's just say you want to have to have like a gr whole group of things become a link. That's when you might actually do kind of like a marquee over a whole thing. And that's going to be this add, edit, web, or document link. So notice as soon as I click on that first choice, I'm going to get this little crosshair and I'm able to then just kind of draw over this kind of box over the whole area of what I want to be linked. So pretty neat. See, in the process is going to be more or less the same, right? In terms of our visibility of our rectangle or not in terms of the line style, all that good stuff. And also my link action if I want to as well. All right. So this I'm going to say, go to a web page and we'll go over here to Oxford online say www and you might have to also do https colon forward slash forward slash because a lot of websites require that now and the browsers will require that so just keep that in mind in case it's not working so i'll go over here to oxford online that's great and you can see there it is this time with my little border around there now if i want to change that if i right click on that you're going to see i have the option to say properties and it's going to take me right back to where I was. Okay. And you can see here, I can change that to visible or invisible. I click okay. And then let me go ahead and close this and I'll see, okay, bam, it is no longer there. All right. Now you'll see now when I move my, when I move my mouse over it, you will see that it's now becoming a little hand, right? Bam. Look at that. And I can click on this and it will in fact give me a little warning right? Are you sure about this? Are you cool with this? I'm going to say allow. Yes, I am cool with this. And it's going to take me 
to Oxford Online. Okay, is this website for real? We don't know for sure. So it's just telling me it's not safe. So just be aware of that. We wanna make sure that we are linking to a site that we know about. All right, if I scroll down a little bit, let's come over to here. Also, this is clickable, right? Not clickable, clickable. I click on that and then this website we know is legit. We love these guys. All right, and then I'm gonna come right back here. Okay, so pretty straightforward dealing with in that way. Let's take a look at some other options. I'm gonna go over here to edit PDF. And now I'm gonna click on link. And let's see what happens if I click on this auto create web links from URLs. The operation cannot be undone. Do you wish to proceed? I'm like, yep, okay, no problem. Automatically generate web links on which pages? I want everything. So again, what is it doing? It's looking for things that it could be a web link to then make it into a web link for me so I don't have to do that. So I click OK and it's scanning. Okay, it found one web link. Cool. Where might that be? Let's scan that. Oh, there's one right there. I think that was it. Okay, very nice because I don't think that was actually clickable before and now it made it as such. So let's come back to that. All right, and now you can see I'm going to right click on that and let's just see the deal here. Edit link. There it is. Cool. Very good. And then there's my action. Notice how it automatically put that in there for me. Okay. That's something we haven't explored yet. When we go into the link properties, now we're going to be able to see an action associated with that. If I want to get rid of that action, I can very easily delete that or I can edit this, right? And I can make it so, you know what, this is going to be a different website altogether. Maybe I forgot my S. I can always add that in there and then I'm good to go. Okay, now let's do something a little bit more manual. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to have a link to an email. I want people to be able to email me directly from my document. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put out some basic text here. So within my edit toolbar, I can just click on add text, put in some text in there, okay, and then Dave at Oxford online dot com. All right. And I'm going to make this into a link so people can actually email me directly from here. So just simply come inside there, right click it, create link. And instead of saying open a web page this time, when I click this, I'm going to have to type out mail to, and then I'm going to say Dave, and I probably could have copied and pasted that, but I'm just going to type it out just so we can see Oxford online.com. All right, now that's a very important part there because notice earlier the prefix was www or http, but when you want somebody to mail you, you just say mail to and it's going to open up to their default email program. So I click okay, okay? And now we'll see now that this is live and it is emailable, let's go ahead and click on it and let's just see what happens. It's going to open up. Look at that. Goes to my email program. So pretty neat. You see there how there's the difference between www and doing mail to colon and then putting in there. And just notice also there's no spaces there. So if I ever want to change that again, you can right click on it and I can then edit the link, but also just notice I have all kinds of other options in here as well. So if I want to change that, go back to my actions, same thing as we did before, and I can make my changes accordingly. Whatever I need to do here, bam, nice and easy, no problems. Okay, now let's go back up to this link option and let's just take a look at this view web links. So in case you wanted to see what links were on each individual page, you can then go ahead and take a look at those, right? And just kind of have it aggregated and then go through all of these. And let's just say I wanted to check out the properties for each of these individually, I can do that. So you can see, bam, there it is. And I can click on properties and oh, that's pretty neat. And I can change this if I want to, but you'll notice that learn it is not on there because guess what? That happened on another page. So when I go to this page and I go to link and I say view web links, you see, oh, there's learn it. Okay. And I click on that and I go to properties. Cool. All right. There it is. And you know what? I forgot to do the HTTP S. Okay. Just notice how I can change that very, very easily. Okay. Done and done. All right. So pretty cool stuff, right? Just making your 
documents nice and interactive as necessary. Okay, starting from the beginning, letting it do with things automatically, right clicking on certain objects, adding it to a link, but then sometimes you need to draw out your whole link box to then marquee over what you want to actually make into a link. All right, and then doing even email if you like to. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, practice that, have fun with it, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Now, there are gonna be some times when you want to create and apply a watermark on your documents to protect it. So people don't share it, people don't print it, and they basically don't take credit for the work that you've done. So you can put a watermark very, very easily on your PDF documents. So we are still inside of this edit PDF tool right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And you'll see over here is my option to add on a watermark. So I click on that, I'm gonna say add. You'll see it comes up with this pretty complex dialog box, but pretty easy to understand. What we're gonna see over here on the left-hand side, we have our source and we can either put in text or we can actually bring in our own file. So maybe you're bringing in your logo, your own insignia, something like that. So let's just go through these one by one. So I'm just gonna click inside of the text area and I'm just gonna type out the word copy, copy, write. Okay, awesome, that comes in. And guess what? I can change the size of that to maybe be a little bit bigger. And you'll notice over here on the right-hand side, I can see there it is, copyright. Maybe you wanna change the color to be somewhat different. Maybe, maybe it could stand out a little bit. All right, and maybe of course you wanna change the font to be something else entirely, totally, totally up to you. I'm gonna keep it relatively simple. All right, now you also have some options to adjust the rotation because maybe you want it to make it kind of just spread across like it was a big stamp. So I can change 45 degree angle and wow, there it is, pretty neat. Okay, but you might be thinking, well, yeah, that looks pretty good, but I want people to be able to read what's on there. So what you can do is you can adjust the opacity of it. So making it a little bit more sort of see-through. So I bring that about halfway down and you'll be able to see, okay, nice and faint. So it's there, but it's not there there, all right? Now, if you wanted to have some really nice control over it, you can adjust the positioning. So down below, you have all these options to position the vertical distance and the horizontal distance. So you can see it's gonna go up that way. It's gonna go up that way, because maybe, in fact, is covering up something really important. You want people to read it, you can just kind of put it up there or down there or right and left, right? So totally up to you, okay? Now, what if you have an image you wanna bring in? So I'm gonna click on File. I notice all my text goes away. And this time I'm gonna bring in an image and you'll see that some of these same principles and procedures are gonna be relatively similar. So I'm gonna click on Browse, and I'm gonna bring in now this uh, Learn It logo. Now, what I want you to understand, first of all, is that only certain file formats are supported. So you can see here's PDF, and then we have bitmaps, and we have JPEGs. So notice, no GIFs, no PNGs, okay? no TIFFs, I believe. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm gonna choose this JPEG that I have there, and then bam, it comes right in. And it even remembers some of the settings that I had earlier. So notice I can change that, or I say none, just like that. Okay, pretty cool, but maybe it's too big. So in this case, what I can do is adjust the absolute scale. Maybe we can come down, down, down a little bit, just like that. Okay, or maybe I wanna make it so it's just gonna be slightly askew, all right? And again, process is very similar in terms of my opacity and all my positioning and everything. All right, so pretty neat, pretty slick, and I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna click OK, wait for it to render, and there you have it. And you can see there it is on every single page now. Very, very cool. And hopefully pretty straightforward and easy for you to apply. All right, so practice that. You can certainly use this Learn It logo if you want to, bring in your own images, or just do text. All right, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Welcome back, welcome back. All right, well, up until this point, we've spoken a little bit about how to link within our documents. We've also spoken a little bit about working with bookmarks. Okay, so each of these things allows us to click on something and then go someplace else. Now, when we talked about bookmarks earlier, we had actually had it been created by Word in our first lesson where we had our headings converted to bookmarks. 
So if you recall, our bookmarks are gonna be hiding over here in this left side pane, and you're gonna see it's gonna look like that, like an old fashioned bookmark, and you'll see this document currently has no bookmarks. Okay, it does have pages, let's just see here. Wow, lots and lots of pages. So what I'd like to do is actually create some bookmarks so my user can go from section to section to section very easily just by opening up this little bookmarks panel and then just clicking, 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 and then bam, there they are. Okay, making it very easy for people to be able to find things and then navigate throughout my document. So how do I do it? First thing I wanna do is I'd like to actually go to the page of where my bookmarking is going to be, right? So let's just say, for example, I have this introduction, right? I want that to be a bookmark. I want people to be able to actually go there very, very easily. So what I'm gonna do is very simply click on this little guy over there with my little bookmark and the plus sign and click. And what's happening now is that Acrobat is paying attention to where I am right now and it knows to bookmark right to that place. So when somebody clicks on that bookmark, it knows to go to this page. So I'm just gonna say introduction, okay? Wonderful, that's great. Now, let's try something a little bit different now. Let's go to the next section. And this time, I'm going to highlight the content that I want to be in my bookmark. So watch how smart Acrobat can be. So I highlight everything, and this time, I'm gonna click on my add bookmark, and then looky, looky, looky. It just takes the text that I've highlighted, and I'm done. Amazing. So let's test it out. Now that we've gone this far, let's click on introduction. It takes me right to introduction. Go to there, okay. Very cool, right? Love that, love that. Let's scroll down a little bit more. And let's do things maybe a slightly different way. This time I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because there's a lot of wasted space right here that when people come there, I want them to be able to go right to a certain part of the page. So now that I'm here, I'm going to highlight all my content again. And all I again did was just do a little triple click to get to that. And now I'm going to create my bookmark. So I click on that and I'm gonna say, nothing at all, look at that. And it puts it in there for me. So let's just see how the difference is between this particular page and our introduction and in the compass. So you can do that. It's like, hmm, okay. It's okay, but because I'm zoomed in, I don't see everything. What about this one? Okay, I mean, it's going to the page, which I'm happy about, but I've been a little spoiled because when I go to here, ah, very nice. It goes directly to that part there that I suggested that I asked it to go. So let's say I wanna fix introduction and in the compass to actually make it do what I have it done for flowers on the wall. So let's now go over to here and then I'm going to just zoom in to where I'd like it to be. But this time I wanted to update with how this currently looks. So if I go over here to introduction, I right click, you'll notice here's an option to set destination. Okay, are you sure you wanna set the destination of the selected bookmark to the current location? Yes. Let's try the same thing for this guy here. So I go right to where I want it, right click, set destination. Yes, I certainly do. Now let's test it out. Flowers on the wall, in the coppice, nice. Okay, so really, really slick stuff. Now let's just check out some other things we can possibly do with our bookmarks. Just notice if you right click, yes, I can go to the bookmark, I can print certain pages, print the section, all that kind of stuff here. But what I'm looking at here is just all my stuff around bookmarks, okay? So I can delete my bookmarks, okay? I can rename it if I want to, right? Maybe I'll just say chapter one, okay? There we go, and that's very easily done. So I go over to here, right click, I can rename that, same deal. I don't even know what chapter that is, so I have to go right to it and look how easy that is to get to it. So I see that that in fact is chapter two. So I'm going to rename that. Cool. All right, now certain things you may wanna do, for example, if I make this a little more narrow, you're gonna see that certain things may happen to my bookmarks. Do you see what it does there? It kind of goes over to the next line. Why is it doing that? Because I have this option for wrap long bookmarks. So if I turn that off, notice what it does. 
So you have the option to turn that on or turn that off. Totally up to you. There's no right or wrong. But just know that that's what wrapping your long bookmark is going to do. Okay. Now let's just check out a couple other things here. Let me now just right click again. I'm going to go here to my properties and we'll see. Okay. So what is the style going to be? Just how you want it to look as far as your bolding, right? Okay, cool. All right. Maybe I want it to be a different color, make it stand out a little bit more. Okay. Absolutely. I can do that. I click okay. And then go back to this one. You'll notice how that one looks a little bit different. So you have that kind of control in case you want that to look slightly different than other documents. So I'm just going to have to just hit undo and get out of that. All right now, a few other things you might want to do in terms of your kind of heading and subheading, if you will, right, to kind of really organize your content is that you can actually start to structure your bookmarks in a way that's going to make it a little bit easier for your audience to understand. So for example, let's go back to the beginning of my document and I'm here and I have the name of the cover of my book here, right? And I want to have everything that's inside of that to be part of a sort of a parent child relationship. So it looks like this is inside of that for you. It could be, you know, here is our introduction, bam. And then everything that's inside of the introduction might be, here's everything about our mission. Okay. Here's everything about our vacation policy. Bam. This is, everything lives inside of that. So you're creating kind of a sectioning for people to understand that there's headings and subheadings. So let me now create a new bookmark out of this. Right, that's going to come up there and then oops, didn't go where I wanted to go. I'm going to fix that. And then of course I can fix all my type there. No problem there. But let's say I want to have this go up. I can very easily just drag that up. Let's just very, there you go. And excellent. There that is. But now I want all three of these to live inside of there to again, to make it appear to the reader that this lives inside of this. Like this is the main heading and then all my chapters are the subheadings within that. So if I click and drag and go kind of up and in, right, notice where I am right there. So I'm gonna go up and in just like that. Nice, I go up and in just like that, up and in just like that. Cool, now I can see I have a heading and a subheading and I can also collapse and expand that. And it's still interactive, right? Still works, no problem at all. And now you can see I have that kind of structure for me to work with. And again, for my readers to be able to understand that structure and then engage and interact with that structure. So as you can see, pretty, pretty cool stuff, pretty easy to execute. But more importantly, you see how valuable this is because you really want to make it so it's easy for your reader to navigate throughout your document, understand the structure, the hierarchy of your document, and be able to just you know not be confused and be able to get all the information that you want to share very quickly and easily. And bookmarks are really a great tool to accomplish that. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this next set of lessons, we're gonna talk about the commenting tab. So with commenting, there is a lot, a lot you can do. So we're gonna break this up into um, a series of different lessons. Um, that are going to really kind of break apart all of the different types of commenting you can do, whether it's visual, whether it's going to be kind of basic proofing, adding in little stamps, highlighting. There's really quite a bit you can do to really kind of give and receive feedback to people. So let's just first open up our comment tab here and we'll see up on top, we will notice a whole, a whole bunch of options here. So if you move your mouse over, you can see what they are. You can see add a sticky note. You can see what you can do here, highlight text. You can underline, strike through. Notice some other ones here, add note to replace text. All these things here, pretty, pretty extraordinary. All the different things you can do. So you'll also notice that when I open up my toolbar here on the right-hand side, I have this whole section here for where my comments are going to live. So I'll be able to actually see those comments as I create them and I'll also be able to see other people's comments when I receive them in another document. So let's just take a look at what we can do. So I'm gonna first just click on this one here just to add on a sticky note. 
All right, and you'll notice that when I click on that, it has a color inside of it already. And you'll also notice that there is another color right here that I could certainly change whatever that sticky note is going to be. So I'm just gonna make mine just a nice, pretty yellow color. And I wanna just kind of draw people's attention to, okay, wait a second, you know what? We are now in 27 different countries. So I click on that and you'll notice, oh, that pops up. And it doesn't actually look like this, it looks like a star. And we're gonna see how we can actually change that in a second, but okay, so what does that mean? I have now just put this little star here that I can now move around, okay? And I can also add in a comment to that, okay? so. I'm gonna double click on it and then add in a comment here. I could say, please change to 27. And then I post that, okay? And then bam, there that is. Now when I click away, I'm just gonna use this little arrow tool here just to kind of go to a neutral space. You'll notice, okay, great. But I can always come back to this and then highlight it, move it around, and then just do whatever I like to do to it. Okay, and then bam, there that is. Now. Each of these little objects that you bring in have these sort of hidden properties associated with them so you can really, really customize them. So if I right click on this, you're gonna see I have this option for my properties right here. So when I click on that, you're gonna see some pretty extraordinary properties and they give you a lot of functionality, a lot of creativity here. So notice here's my color, here's all my different icons I can use as well. So let's just say, for example, I have kind of a different comment all throughout, like, oh, this is gonna be kind of like a, maybe a more kind of urgent one. I really wanna kind of like draw some people's attention to that. Okay, hey, you know, that's wrong. And I'm gonna make this red so I can really kind of draw people's attention into that. Fantastic, that's great. That's exactly what I wanna see. So people are like, yeah, I really need to change that. But just take a look at some of the other ones here. Just a simple check mark, text note, Right. What are you wanting people to make changes to? What are you sort of trying to get people's attention by? So I click OK, and now bam, there that is. OK, now let's go ahead and just try a different one. So I'm going to use the same, same tool here. So I'm going to go over to here, and I'm just going to say Add Sticky Note. This time, let's try a different one. OK, so I'm going to go over to this guy here, and then notice it remembers kind of the last one that I did. But I want to change that, so again, I'm going to right-click on it. I'm going to come down here to Properties. And this time, I'm just gonna do a nice little friendly comment box, just like that. And here you'll see I can actually adjust the opacity. If I wanna make that a little more see-through, I can do that as well, just like we did in previous exercises. But I want you to notice here, if you're using something quite a bit, you can make it the default, okay? So whatever you're doing here, you might want that to always be the case. So I actually kinda of like this little comment box here. I'm gonna use that all the time and I also wanna keep that color, I can very easily do that now. So I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm going to double click, put in some text here, okay? Now it is, now it's in the Mission District, okay? And I post that, all right, and there you go. All right, now, ready to do the next one, let's go ahead and click and then click and lo and behold, there it is. And it's the same exact look. So that's gonna save me a lot of time moving forward into the future, okay? So that's gonna be the first part of how we're gonna do this. Now, let's take a look at some other options here. So very basic things like highlighting. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to actually highlight Mr. Land in there. So I click on that. Very simply, I just click and drag and there it is, wonderful. And then notice, even though it's just a highlight, I can put a comment on this as well. Okay, I'll just say, Mrs. Landon, okay, is now the sole owner. Please update. Okay, very good, wonderful. Then of course, I can change the color of that, right click on that, and I'm gonna say properties, and same deal, I can change the color to a different color and notice I see it in real time. Great, love that. But then again, notice, right click again, I can say make current property default. So the same thing that I saw earlier inside of my properties, down here, I can do it here just the same. So I click on that. And now when I'm ready to do a different one, let's just go ahead and come to a different section here. Let's just highlight Latin Quarter. And wow, cool, love that, awesome. Makes it super, super easy to navigate through 
no problem, really, really slick. All right, so I'm gonna pause the video. We'll go on to a next section, but really kind of get familiar with these. I want you just to kind of just go through some of the basics, check out under the hood, look at the properties, check out some of these cool little icons you can do, change the color, make the default, and then we'll come back and then we'll just slowly, steadily go through some of these other commenting tools. This next lesson is going to be uh, more about this section right here where we're going to be talking more about sort of like proofing and feedback and a few other things around that. When we're actually looking at our documents, we just want to kind of give some feedback and some editing tips and things like that to our coworkers or our collaborators, whoever it's going to be. So again, if you move your mouse over, you'll see this will underline text. This will do a strike through. This is going to add a note to replace text. So you're basically just saying, hey, can you please do that? So you're gonna be giving that sort of feedback through the actual like visual iconography that's going to say, hey, replace this text. You move your mouse over this one, you're gonna see here it's going to insert text at the cursor. So you're basically telling your coworker, whatever, to do that as well. And then you'll see here, this is just adding on a text comment, just, just gonna be kind of floating there individually. And then you can see this is just adding on a text box. So let's just go ahead and explore what these are. Most of them are pretty straightforward. Click on that. And then, then I'm just going to highlight Mr. Landon again. And then look at that, it gets underlined. Now it's not just an underline as far as like formatting. You'll see over here, it ends up inside of my comments panel over here as an underline. So I can make a comment here if I like and just start to type it out. And then just say, remember to change to Mrs. Okay, whatever you want to say there. All right, fantastic. Let's continue on. Let's now just do a strike through. So we're no longer saying something about 400 neighborhoods. Okay, great. And then we get that. All right, now again, pretty straightforward. And again, same thing where it goes over here into our comments panel. Let's check out this one here. You'll see this one's gonna be a little bit different. Add note to replace the text. So let's now choose this one and we'll just talk about this one right there and you'll see, okay, what is that note going to be? We'll just say this is going to be misses. Okay, and then if you're familiar with how proofing goes, you will know that that's what our little icon there is gonna tell us. Okay, so if I go back over to here, I go back over to here again, this is all interactive and it tells me here replace text. This one's gonna say something a little different. It says highlight text. Okay, so you know, you'll want to let people know that you're working with uh, what these things actually mean if they're not familiar with it. And of course, also to pay attention to what the comments panel is also communicating. Okay, so let's go back to our next one here. This is gonna be insert text at cursor, okay? So we can just say, I don't know, we're talking about poor Mr. Landon. You can see he died at home with his family. Okay, so you'll notice here saying, okay, we're insert text at this part here. So we're communicating this, hopefully very clearly, what we want to have done through our comments panel. So it doesn't take up all the space on the actual document on the page all that much, except for our little icons here. But we need to take a look at our comments panel to see what in fact we are communicating. All right, so you know, slightly different than these other ones, but you know, still valuable nonetheless. Okay, and now this one here, let's just do just a very simple, simple add text comment. So I click on that and I'll just say, bam, like there, okay. Let's change this font a bit. Make, make it bigger, etc. Okay, cool, all right, and then that's done. All right, so I'll just come back to that and then that is settled there, okay? Now my, my font and my everything is all just right there so I can just see that. I don't necessarily need to be using the comments panel here. All right, now this part, you'll see this adds on a little bit more kind of flavor, if you will, adding on a text box. So we choose that, and then I'm just going to just, just click, and now you'll see, as soon as I click on that, you're gonna see, okay, do we need a header here, okay? And now, you'll see that I have a little more kind of like functionality here to be able to work with this little text box to change the font. Let's just go to courier. Let's make that a little bit bigger, okay? And then let's go ahead and make that black. Actually, no, let's make it red, make it stand out a little bit, okay? Kind of like that. Okay, excellent. 
Now, you'll also notice when I click away and then come back to it, I can then select the box itself because maybe sometimes we didn't make it big enough or whatever it is. Okay, and we'll also be able to move this around. So it gives us a little bit more kind of functionality. And if you right click on it, guess what? We can go over here to properties, just like we've seen with some of our other um, tools here. And you can see, okay, well, let's make our box a little bit thicker. Fill color, maybe I don't want any fill color at all because maybe I want to kind of float on top of it. My border color, let's make that black. Okay, so I click OK. And again, if I move this over here now, you can see I can kind of move it on top of other things because the fill color is in fact clear now. Okay, now moving along in our toolbar here, you can see very simply here is just the ability to draw. Let's wait for it. Let's click away and come back over there. It's trying. It is going to give us the ability to draw. So let me just go ahead and click on that. And maybe it's going to come out, maybe it's not. I can assure you it will do. It can be a little finicky. So if I'm just wanting to just sort of draw some attention to something, let's come back over to here and I'll just kind of just draw something around this image here. I could just go like that and see, so you know, that is not just something that I drew on. I now actually have a comment on here. Okay. I could just say, Hey, is this an old pick? So I've had, I've now added on a little more kind of functionality to be, you know, like it's a piece of paper, right? It's a little bit different. I mean, it's a little more kind of human, if you will, to be able to play around with that. Now, if, again, if I right click, you're going to see, I have this option here to Go to my properties and then maybe I want to change the color to something else, you know, maybe not so garish. I can do that. I can make it a little bit thicker if I want to. Okay, pretty neat. And likewise, if I want to get rid of something, let's say, for example, I don't want this anymore. Right next to my little drawing tool is the ability to erase it. There we go. Erase drawing. And then I could just simply click on it or I can click and drag on it. You can see it gets it, gets it. You got to be very precise on there and then go for it and then steady hand, steady hand and done. And now it's gone. <laughs> okay. So you might want to do all those things there um, just to kind of keep it again, very, very interactive. Okay. So um, just a good, good overview of all the things that we can do in terms of just our proofing our feedback and everything. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to learn how to use this little stamp tool. Um, you're going to see that's pretty valuable. Um, for, you know, just saying that something is approved, something is copyrighted, something has been completed, whatever it is, but we're also going to learn how to do custom stamps as well. And then a few other of these options here as well. So stay tuned and um, please practice this and we'll see you in the next lesson. For this lesson, we're going to learn how to apply stamps. Okay. And the stamps also exist inside of the commenting toolbar here. So I have that up, but we are going to work with a little bit of a different document this time. We're going to go back to that bookmarks document because I've just chosen to have something a little bit more clean for us to work on. Now, how do I get to my stamp? You're going to see there it is. My stamp looks like a little rubber stamp. And you've probably seen that before, you know, where you just you stamp something in real life and you say, hey, this has been received. OK, this is the final copy. Hey, this is the draft, something like that. Now, there's a lot, a lot you can do with stamps. So let's just explore what our options are. So when you click on that, you're going to see there might be something, maybe the last thing you've used or something that expects you to use. So I can just bam, click on approved, and then you'll see a little approved stamp will appear there. Pretty neat. You can see here's also something dynamic. What does that mean? You can see this is going to give you like approved, for example, but it gives you the person's name, who is actually the owner of the document at that time, and then the time and the date. Look at that. Pretty amazing. So you can actually see when this in fact is being recorded. So pretty neat. And you also see we have like all these little things that you can put in there. It's almost like a sticker you might see in real life. So just giving people the indication, hey, please go ahead and sign here. So it makes it nice and interactive, nice and visual, nice and nice and clear for people to you know follow your commands. Then you also have this. And this is probably where you're going to be spending a good part of your time um, applying things. So let's just check out what options are here. We have approved, not approved, draft, final, confidential, right? It's, wow, so many great things here. So let's just say, for example, I sent this out and I don't want anybody to see it. I'm just saying confidential. And when I put this on here, there's going to be a stamp on there. And if somebody tries to print it, it's going to show it right there. So we'll know that someone's you know, violated our confidentiality agreement. So I click on that. And then to add it on here, just simply click 
and it comes on there. That's fantastic. You'll notice here I have my comments tab. It comes up here so I can make a comment on that. And I can also resize it. So you'll notice I have my little bounding boxes on the side here. Okay, and I also have this thing in the middle that's gonna help me rotate it. So I'm just gonna make that nice and big, and then I'm gonna go over here to the center and then rotate. Perfect. Love that, okay, good size and everything. But I still want people to be able to read it. So if I right click, I'm gonna go over here to properties. You'll notice here is the ability to adjust my opacity to make it a little bit more see-through. Okay, so kind of nice, right? So I was like, all right, I like that. That looks pretty good. And I click OK. And there you have it. Pretty cool. Okay, now you will have to put this on every single page, just so you know that. So it is not automatically on every page like we saw with the watermark. So just be aware of that. You might need to put it on every single page. Okay, so let's just take a look at some of the other ones you might want to work with. So let's come back over to here. And I'm going to go to my stamp. And this time, let's actually do dynamic so we can see, all right, this has been reviewed. I just click on that. Cool. Good enough, right? You already saw how to resize it and rotate it. I'm pretty happy with that. But again, notice what comes up, okay? It shows me the date and the time and the person who's actually reviewing it. Let's go over here to this next one. And let's take a look at this uh, sign here. Just so we can just see, all right, we want people to sign there. Great. And then that's all that's going to be, right? So you're just kind of giving people's uh, eyeballs attention to where you want them to sign, okay? So it's not actually interactive where people are gonna click on it and then like a signature thing is gonna come up. It's just a way for people to identify the location of different elements on your page to know like, oh yeah, I need to sign there. Okay, great, fantastic. All right, let's just check out some other things here. This time we're gonna go over here to custom stamps. Now, custom stamps are gonna be created by people who wanna bring in their own stamps that are gonna be beyond anything that Acrobat actually gives us, right? any of these. So we wanna bring in our own stamps. So I'm gonna click on custom stamps and then create. And you'll see here, I got nothing. I need to actually bring in my custom stamp, right? I need to actually bring it in. So Acrobat wants it to be, could be a PDF, could be a JPEG, Right, so you wanna make sure that you actually you know, have those available to you all ready to go as their own separate files. So I click on browse and I'm gonna go into here and here and let's see. Okay, there's my stamp, double click on that. And then, okay, very good, there it is. I click okay. And now at this point, I can start even categorizing it because I might have a whole slew of different ones that I'm working with. Okay, so I'm just gonna call this HP Review. Okay, that's just one category. You may start to have more and more and more for whatever reason it is, right? And maybe it's with HR, maybe it's with management, it's finance, right? For whatever reason, you just wanna stay organized with it for whatever purpose this stamp has. Okay, and I'm just gonna name this. Okay, so HP Internal Review. Okay, great. And then do you want to downsample the stamp to reduce the file size? Sure, maybe, maybe not, depending on the quality of it, depending on what you want to sort of convey in terms of, you know, the brightness of it or something like that, but leave it checked. I click OK. Now I'm going to come back over here, click on this, and you will see now I have my category all sitting there waiting for me, and bam, I get a nice little preview of it and everything. I click on that and click, and voila, amazing. And I can resize this. And again, I can rotate it and I can right click on it, go to my properties, bring down the opacity. Pretty neat, now I can see right through that. Okay, so a lot, a lot of really, really cool features there with the stamp, okay, that makes it interactive, communicative, and you know, mimicking kind of real life things that you might wanna do. All right, so you have access to this file inside the courseware if you wanna use the ones that I provided um, or use your own. Okay, so please pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Have fun. In this lesson, we're going to continue on with our commenting portal here, and we're gonna work with this little guy right here, which is adding on an attachment. You might be thinking, well, why do I wanna add on an attachment to a document? You may be referring to an old document and you want people to have easy access to it, right? Or you want people to be able to click on it and then say, hey, listen, click on this little you know, push pin there and then refer back to 
you know, our glossary or something like that. You just want to have people to have more interactivity than allows for the screen real estate to even provide for us. Now, one thing I just want to say is that within your side panel here, you do have this guy right there that also allows for similar functionality, but in my opinion, it's a little bit hidden. So you can see here, I can actually add on an attachment and you can do that right from here and it's gonna allow me to do that and I'll just do that really quickly. And that's gonna be right there. Some people may miss that, okay? But I'm gonna keep that there just so you know that it's there, it's great. But let's just see maybe a better way to do it. So I'm gonna go back over to here, click on this little, um, what is that, a paper clip? <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna say attach file. And then you'll see that once I click on that, my mouse turns into this little push pin. So where do I want this located? So let me just go down to here, all right? I click on that and bam, just like that, something opens up to a place for me to install uh, and attach a file. So I click on this and then that's now going to be right there. Awesome, amazing. So it's very clear to people that, oh, if I click on that, then oh, something's gonna come up. So, all right, well, what, what is the way for you to communicate that? Could it be an attachment like this, like a pin? Okay. Is it a graph, right? Maybe that's what you're communicating. Is it a tag? Whatever it is, right? So you'll know what the right thing is to do. So I'm gonna go back to this attachment. I'll change the color, really make that stand out. Okay, and then click OK. And then people will have the ability to then click on this, open it up, and then bam, they'll have a new file accessible to them. You'll also see over here on the right-hand side, way over here, I have the indication that I have attached a file and what file that in fact is. Okay, so pretty neat. Again, we have the option here on the left-hand side. Notice it actually comes in twice, right, to tell me that, hey, in fact, this is here, as well as me attaching it onto the side pane. Okay, so it's a little bit redundant. So just pick one versus the other, but just know that they may miss it if you, um, you know, if you if you only put it on the side pane. All right, up to you and up to your kind of company culture. So try it out, but just know that the functionality is there. Okay, in the next lesson, we're gonna talk about shapes. And then after that, we're gonna get into this a lovely, lovely little commenting panel to see how we can actually make sense and sort of tame the beast that is becoming this, this comments panel. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, welcome back. Hope you are enjoying this lesson on commenting and uh, you've got enough time to practice and you're feeling pretty good about it. So let's move on now to this other component within our commenting options is working with shapes. Now there's a lot of shapes you can do and a lot of reasons for working with shapes. So if you take a look at the dropdown, we have the ability to draw arrows and rectangles and ovals, even like text callouts, maybe a cloud. Okay, so there's gonna be many reasons for you to you know, put these out there like doing arrow is a very common thing here so if i click and drag on that click and drag this way click and drag that way notice i can very easily just draw these things out okay and you'll notice that when i let go i'm going to have some of my options right there to just very quickly change the color all right click on this and very easily change my line thickness if i want to okay that's pretty neat and then you'll notice also potentially something new where we have this little gear icon and that's gonna open up to my properties panel. So you can probably guess I can get to the same thing just by simply right clicking on it and going to properties. Great, and then I can see it there, All right? Now, you'll also notice that I have a bunch of options now because this in fact is a particular shape, which is an arrow. It's gonna allow me to then just like play around with it in slightly different ways, right? Okay, what is the end gonna look like? Okay, great, oh, that's kind of nice. So it's closed out, it looks like more like an arrow, you know, that we may want to kind of be a little bit more of a kind of pronounced arrow. Okay. What about my style? So I choose like that. Okay. Slightly different. Do I want that? No, I can always go back to it. All right now my fill color, maybe I want it to be filled in with a similar color as what it started with. So I do that and then, okay, pretty cool. All right. But then let's say I want to do something slightly different with this. So I'm going to click okay and I'm going to now just rotate this in this way and then just move it that way. So I'm just going right to like the little points there in the end. Okay, excellent, very good. Okay, and if I'm done with it, I can just go ahead and just click away and I am good to go. Let's just check out some of the other ones and you're gonna see it's gonna be quite similar across the board. So um, we'll just do a very simple 
um, rectangle. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle around this. And OK, great, wonderful. That's awesome. And if I right click on this now, you're going to see I'm going to have similar options here, right? But of course, it's not an arrow, so we're not going to have the, the kind of beginning and end of it. But I might want to do something a little bit different, like a little bit of a dashed line, right? For whatever reason, you want to kind of draw people's attention to it. Or maybe you're even just doing it for visual interest on something, like you're actually doing something creative. You might want to do that, okay, for whatever reasons, okay? But maybe you're doing like a little kind of a thought bubbly thing, kind of something a little more fun. You can 100% experiment with these. All right now, there's also some other pretty neat ones here, like this text call out. If I choose that one, let me just go ahead and just click and drag, right? And then notice what it's doing as I click and drag on it. Okay, so when I let go of that, I can now just start putting some text inside of there. So I just double clicked, okay? And I'll just say now, now on the east and and then bam, it does that for me. Okay, and I'll come to the edge here, make that a little bit wider, make it a little bit taller. And of course, you guessed it, if I right click on it, go over here to properties, I can then make all kinds of different changes to it. Let's make that a little more bubbly, a little more fun. And let's make that not so fun by making it black. And I click away and cool, there you have it. So just another way to comment, really. Because remember where we're at, we're here about commenting and keeping things communicative and collaborative with all of our coworkers and collaborators. All right, so practice that. Lots of good stuff to work with there for many, many different reasons. And uh, you'll see that it's pretty intuitive once you kind of get under the hood. All right, so when we come back, we're gonna close up our discussion on comments by sort of making sense of this comments panel and being able to sort of tame that and make it a lot easier to use for us. See you in a bit. Now, since we started this segment on commenting, you probably noticed that our little comments pane on the right hand side has gotten more and more crowded, you know, which is a good thing because we want to have all kinds of different comments on there to be able to give feedback, to make comments, to be able to make changes and, you know, what have you. Now, you'll see that there's a lot going on on this comments pane. This is going to allow us to really kind of tame things a little bit, filter some things out by different elements and really just kind of be organized with our comments. So if you look over here on the right hand side, it tells me number one, I have 15 comments and I have a little magnifying glass for searching and then my little A to Z, maybe a little filter icon there. These all have their own individual purposes. You'll also notice this is saying, oh, this is page one. Okay, and how many comments are on there? Okay, we're gonna see this is gonna change a little bit based on what we have as our sort of um, element that we're now not filtering necessarily, but we're creating as different individual sections. We're gonna see how that's gonna change in a bit. Now, each of these comments has a little icon next to it, right? You can see there's a little T, right? There's a little T in a box. Okay, there's a little highlighter. There's a T with an underline. Okay, so that is Acrobat's way of telling us, hey, you have done something and this is what you have done. It also tells us here, this is text comment, this is a text box, this is highlight text. Okay, cool, really helpful. Okay, but let's go a step further to see what we can do to actually um, be a little more organized and a little speedier in our way to be able to access certain comments at certain times. So let's just start off with our little magnifying glass. I'm gonna click on that to search my comments. I'm just gonna type out Landon. Oh, pretty cool, right? So every comment that I have in there that has Landon in there will now appear. Pretty cool. You're just looking for it. Where is that? Oh, okay, cool. I click on that and then, all right, awesome. It shows me right there and it actually will show me the content of it itself. I can now reply to it if I want to. I can actually accept that. Like, okay, cool. Yes. All right, I'll make a change to that. I've, I've communicated that. I'm good to go. Close that out. Now let's see what this A to Z does. Notice here it's going to say sort comments. Okay, this is sorting. This is filtering. So what does that mean? If I click on that, you're gonna see I can sort things by different properties, right? So either my pages, which it currently is right now, or maybe by author, right? I'm the only author in this case. I'm gonna show you another example for another document in just a second, or maybe by type. So when I do that, notice how it groups together all the different types, right? Notice all my highlighters are grouped together, all my replace and insert text, right, are all there together. My line, my rectangle, my sticky notes are all together in one. Okay, they are sorted together. I click on this now. You'll see how about my check mark status. 
Okay, cool. So you can see this is the only one that's been checked, the one I just did a second ago. So that shows up at the top and all these are unchecked. So I know, okay, great. These are ones that I need to go through, right? This is now on my list of to-dos, so I need to go through all these, okay? And then, of course, you'll explore all the rest of these on your own. But let's go over to here to this one where we have a number of different people on here commenting. So when I click A to Z, you're gonna see now I can sort together. There's all Bob's stuff. There's all Anthony's, Gary Anthony's stuff. There's Pat Smith. Okay, awesome, good. It's all grouped together. And for some of you, that's gonna be the best way because you really only wanna see your boss's stuff or your client's stuff, right? So it's gonna be a nice, fast way to be able to group them. Now let's take a look at this little filter comments option. And you can see, okay, well, I only want to show certain things. I only want to show sticky notes, okay? I click on apply. And then bam, get rid of everything else, right? It's getting way too busy. So now I have tamed that beast. Click on that. But let's say I actually wanna do that and I wanna see my file attachments. Cool, now I have them both. All right, okay, cool. Now I can just see only what I want, but just notice all the control you have. Pretty, pretty great. So I'm gonna click on clear all. And then finally, let's go over to here to this section where you can actually control what you are seeing in terms of expanding and collapsing all. So if I say collapse all, notice they're totally getting in the way. I don't wanna see them. Great, I can just collapse them or I can expand them so they're all gonna be there. And just keep in mind again that this is all still organized by what we've set it to be organized by, right? So if I go back to page, notice when I do that, it's gonna show me everything on this particular page. And then when I say, collapse all, notice how it goes page one, page two, right? As, to, as opposed to before when things were by check mark status. So you also have the option to do some pretty great things like printing with the comment summary, okay? You can even create a comment summary. So it's just going to be a separate file that's going to give you a summary of all of your comments, right? Pretty great, I'll let you experiment with that. Um, outside of the scope of this, but go ahead and just click on that and you'll see how easy it is to do, okay? And then maybe some of you want to export everything into Word, so then you'll be able to take a look at it in another document and then also share it in another document. So then it'll be just nice and organized for you, okay? And then finally, we go to our commenting preferences, okay? We have not touched on preferences. So when I click on that, you're gonna see, this is gonna take me to the mother load of all different commenting preferences here, as well as all these other preferences here. Okay, towards the end, we're gonna do a nice little um, overview on some of these things to explore, but you'll see that there are a ton of stuff, right, in terms of the font and the font size of how you want your comments to be shown here. Okay, when you're doing pop-ups, how big of the opacity do you want it to be? That's percentage. Okay, and then do you wanna print the notes, right? Just go through all of these things here to be able to say, what do you want? What don't you want? Okay, so totally up to you. But I want you to know where you go to be able to make these um, changes. So I'm going to get out of this and just know also if you want to get to them a different way, you can go to edit and then preferences and then commenting is the first choice right there. If you're on a Mac, you just click on Acrobat in the upper left and then choose preferences and it'll take you right there. Okay. So lots and lots of great options here with commenting in general. So we've covered quite a bit. I encourage you to really just explore these things and you know, work with your coworkers to find out what's gonna be the most important and the most effective way for you to be able to give and receive feedback and commenting so you have the best documents you could think of and ultimately creating the best product. Okay, so pause the video, please practice this, get it all sealed in, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. In this exercise, we're gonna learn about redacting. So redacting is basically when you want to blot out certain bits of information and make it permanent. So essentially, if you just imagine a black marker going over some words where you just don't want them visible anymore, that is what redacting is. So it's good for you know security purposes and essentially just keeping things confidential so no one will ever see it. So how do we get to the redacting options? You notice on the right hand side, there is no redacting option for me here by default. So what I need to do is go over here to my more tools and then 
Also, how we talked about earlier is that, you know what, we have a lot of tools here. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit easier instead of going up and down looking for all your different tools. You can go over here to the upper left and now just do a quick search for, let's just say, redact and bam, there it is. Okay. And again, also notice that I could drag this over here to my tools or I can just click on add and then bam, there's redact. And very simply, I can come right back to my file. So I want to redact certain things from this document. So I'm going to click on redact and you'll see, okay, very good. A little uh, wizard's going to come up, select the areas in the document you want to redact permanently, click on next. And then once you are done marking redactions, hit apply to redact the content permanently. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. So you click on this drop down, you're going to see there's a little message here, redact an entire page if you want to, or find text and redact. Okay, so okay, pretty cool. But guess what I could also do? I could just go over to here. Now that this is highlighted, I can then say, hey, listen, we are going to redact this bit of information. And you'll see a red box appears around the content that I'm going to redact. It doesn't actually get redacted yet. They're just letting me know that, okay, this is about to get redacted. Okay, pretty cool. Let's just find something else. Let me just redact Bernal Heights. Okay, great. That's helpful. I see that there. And now for this one, I'm going to come down to this whole page, click on this drop down, and just say redact page. You'll notice here is mark page range, mark current page for redaction, or you can do an entire page range if you wanted to. So if you had a, a consecutive set of pages, it would be one hyphen three, or if it was ones that were not consecutive with each other, you do one comma three comma five, something like that. I'm just going to choose mark current page for redaction. I click okay. And you'll see, okay, there we go. And now it gets all black telling me that it's been redacted. And now finally, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a kind of a search, right? It's going to be a find and search and redact. So you've all probably seen find and replace before. Now we're going to do the spaced off of words. And it's going to find it. So I'm going to go over here to find text and redact. It says documents can contain images or line art that may appear as text, but are not searchable. So if you have text, let's just say like a nice fancy title that you brought it in as a JPEG or something like that, it would not see that as text. So they're just warning you about that. So I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to ask me, okay, well, what word would you like to search for? Okay, great. And is that word going to be case sensitive? Because that's very important for you. And also, where would you like to search? Okay, so check it out. Where would you like to search in the current document? And look at that, all PDF documents in a particular folder. Pretty nice. And then search for the single word or phrase, multiple words or phrase, patterns, so many great options for you. So I'm just going to do a single word or phrase, and I'm just going to type out Landon. Okay, and then click on this button in the bottom here, search and remove text. It's doing a nice little find there, and then it shows me all the results. Okay, so before I do this, it's asking me, hey, are you sure this is cool? You want to do all of these? And I'm like, yeah, you know what? We don't want to show that at all. Okay, for whatever reason, bam, and it's down 51 instances very quickly. But instead of having to go through these one by one by one, I can very easily say, check all. Okay, very good. And then finally, you'll see on the bottom, this button down here, kind of hiding in plain sight, mark check results for redaction. I click on that and then bam, there you are. I can close this box out. And now we have these red boxes going around each of the words that are going to be redacted. And then finally, I am ready, ready, ready to redact. So I click on apply. And then again, it tells me a little warning. This will permanently remove the redacted information from this document. Once you save the document, you won't be able to retrieve the redacted information. Your document might contain hidden data or metadata. Do you wish to remove them too? So sanitize and remove hidden information. And we have a nice little information bit here in case that's not clear what that is metadata, embedded content, and attached files, etc. There might be some hidden things in the background, like, you know, certain keywords, author names, things like that, that you might want to redact because maybe Mr. Landon was the author or Landon was the keywords. So we want to actually sanitize some of that stuff that's behind the scenes of what we're looking at here. So I'm going to make sure that that's checked. I click OK, and then I have to save it. So I'm just going to say redacted complete 
And now, just like that, magic. Cool, very cool. And then look at that entire page redacted. All right, so super, super valuable and relatively easy. Probably the hardest part for you is going into the tools panel to find your redaction um, tools. All right, so but once you're there, you're home free. Okay, so practice that. Have a good lesson and uh, we'll see you soon. Let's now talk about the important topic of accessibility. So accessibility implies a user that is currently using a screen reader technology that allows them to go through a document and have that screen reading technology read back to them. So screen reader technology depends on certain types of elements to be present for the user to have an equal experience. So one example is putting on what we call alternative text on an image. Okay, so images cannot be read by the screen reader. So therefore we need to put text on those images so the screen reader can describe what those images are. Also having the tab order because screen reader users will hit tab on their keyboard to go through a document. So we need to make sure that the document has a proper flow to it. Okay, and we're gonna see a number of other examples as well. But now, one thing I wanna say is that many of you may be required to have accessible documents, particularly people who are working with government organizations or have any kind of relationship with the federal government. Even if you're getting some kind of financial aid, if you're getting a loan, if you have any kind of contracts, if you are audited, there could be consequences. So you wanna make sure that you are also um, having your documents be accessible. Okay. Also, we want to be considerate to make sure that everybody has a, a similar and equal experience uh, when you're looking at your documents. Okay, so we're going to go through a few different steps on how to do this. All right. First of all, I'm going to bring up my accessibility toolbar here. And if yours isn't there, you can always go to tools and you can find it there and you'll be able to scroll up or down depending on how you have your things organized. Or again, as I showed you earlier, you can go ahead and just search for accessibility. Mine is currently right here. I'm going to click on that. And you're going to see a number of different options here. Let me just scroll up to the top. And one thing you may want to start off with here is just your accessibility check just to see, well, what elements should I be looking for? So when I click on that, you're going to see this is going to pop up with a lot, a lot of different things here. So it's going to give me a little report to tell me, hey, this has been reported on, you know, things, these are things are missing. These things need to be worked on halfway or these things are done. Okay, we're all good. All right, and then do you want to actually have this report attached to the document, et cetera? And then down here, you have all kinds of different options as far as, right, what things do you want it to show, right? So like what types of things are we actually looking to check for? Now, I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to do things in a little bit more sort of like automated way. We're going to kind of run through a little engine, but you might want to study these as you're creating your documents to know, okay, well, you know what? My document needs to have a title. Okay, are bookmarks present? Okay, da 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 da. So we need to make sure that these things do exist as we're creating our document. So this is just a good checklist. So I'm going to cancel this and close this out. I'm going to show you a really great way to do things in a much more kind of automated fashion, and that is using the action wizard. So I don't see my action wizard here. So you guessed it. I can go over here to tools, and then I can't find my action wizard. So I just type out action, and then bam, there that is. Okay, use guided actions to standardize routine PDF tasks. So there's a lot of actions we can do. We're just gonna be looking at the accessibility set of actions. So I'm gonna click on add just to have that there. Go back to my document. And then I'm gonna simply find Action Wizard down on the lower right. Click on that. And you can just see there's a lot of options here, right? So archive documents, publish sensitive information, optimize things for the web, like in terms of your images and things like that. So you'll want to check those out. But why are we here? We're here to make our document accessible, not just learn about whether it's accessible or not, and not just check for accessibility, but to make it accessible. Okay, so these actions are actually not just going to give us information, but it's going to change things for us. So I'm going to click on make accessible. And very quickly and easily, you're going to see I have this little kind of wizard that's about to appear here for me. Okay, so you'll see it's checking my document, right, which is called check right there. And then you can see it breaks it down into a number of different categories. So we're just going to click on start and go through each individual category and we'll see what it shows for us, what kind of actions we need to take. 
So I'm gonna click on start and it's gonna pop up and tell me, uh oh, wait a second. There's no title, there's no subject, there's no author, there's no keyword. Hmm, okay, good idea to have those there. So let's go ahead and, all right, I'm just gonna say, okay, this is in the coppice, okay, subject. Okay, I'll just say book from 1942 in the coppice, okay. Author is Daniel Silversmith. Okay, and I'll just say American literature, uh, fiction, and in the coppice. Okay, so very good. So this is gonna make it more searchable. So when you put this on the web, it's gonna make it more searchable, okay? And if the person who has the screen reading technology wants to know inf more information, this is called metadata. So this metadata will come up within their search. So I'm gonna click okay. Great, now we're going on to the next thing. All right, so we've just went from one section to the other. And this should be familiar to those of you who watched the earlier part of my lessons on OCR technology, right? Here's this R, right, recognizable, right? Optical character recognition. Okay, so it's basically gonna look for anything that might need to be scanned and turned into searchable text. Because again, screen readers cannot read that type of image, so it needs to be made into readable text. Okay, so bam, you can see that. Maybe I wanna say editable text and images, just kind of go for it all the way, okay? Is this document intended to be used as fillable forms? It is not, okay, but you need to understand that if it is, we need to make sure that the form fields are in fact detectable. So again, people can have equal experience. So I'm just going to say, nope, skip this step. It's great. And what's my reading language? Yeah, I guess it is English. I'm gonna click okay. It's just running through this wizard. It's pretty remarkable. Acrobat will detect all figures in this document and display any figures with missing alternate text. Okay, so this comes back to what we were talking about before where our images need to have text associated with them so they can be read by the screen reader. So I click okay, and now there you go, first image. All right, so I'm gonna say line drawing of primrose flower, okay? Now, see what I just did there? I didn't just say image. You know, I was actually very specific. I didn't even say just, just primrose. Right, I was very specific about what it was. So we wanna to try to be as detailed and descriptive as possible for people. Just imagine that you are describing this to somebody or how you'd want it to be described to you. Okay, so I'm gonna click on save and close. Okay, and then bam, very good. And then we can see it's gonna check it for us one more time. We're back to where we were before. Click on start checking. And now I'll be able to go through here and I'll be able to see, okay, well, how'd we do? Pass, pass, pass. Okay, that's great. All right, everything looks pretty good. Uh-oh, what's going on here? What happened with this one? All right, so I need to find where this one is and then put some alternative text on that. So you'll notice again that it didn't get it. So what I do is very simply right-click on it. I'm gonna say fix. So there I am over there on the figure alternate text. It's failed, so I click on fix. It missed it. So now I can go over to here and say this is a line drawing of an anemone. Okay, save and close. All right, very good. Pass, pass, pass. I'm super happy. This is awesome. This is ready to go. Okay, so, and if you know anybody with screen readers, of course, you'll want to test this out. Okay, you want to make sure that this is as you know, clean as possible and uh, the experience is as fluid and helpful as possible for people, okay? We just wanna make sure that it is pretty airtight. All right, but you'll see that Acrobat has a really, really nice set of features to make it. So you're checking everything and you're fixing everything in relatively good speed, okay? So uh, practice this, um, make sure that you get this down, understand again that we go through the accessibility option, but then also we can go through actions as well. Okay, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we are gonna talk about creating, editing, and modifying forms. So this particular document that you're looking at here looks very much like a form. 
Okay, but can I fill it out? I don't think so, right? If I try to click in here and I try to type in there, can't do anything, okay? If I were to print it out, certainly, and I were to give that to somebody, they can write into it. So certainly from the naked eye, it looks like it is workable. But you know what? That's not very good for my users. I wanna make it so I can send this to people and they fill it out and then they have all the little boxes in there and they could just fill it out accordingly. And then they can also send it to me, right? Or they can clear the form. I'm gonna give them lots and lots of options to be able to do what I want them to do and what they want them to do, essentially. Okay, so typically, if you are going to be creating a form such as this, it's a good idea to either create it in Word or potentially create it in Acrobat with these kind of like pseudo form fields ready because we're gonna do something called the form wizard and it's going to just basically run this through a process to find these little lines and boxes and things and even some of these check boxes and everything like that and potentially some of these little buttons here but not as powerful as what we're gonna do but you wanna kinda of give it a head start so when it is doing that scan it's looking for these individual lines and boxes to say, hey, you know what? I bet that he or she wants to make that into a form field, okay? So what we're going to do is we're gonna use this thing called the form wizard that's going to run through it and then we don't have to do a lot of the work, all right? So if you are more comfortable in Word, you can just make these little lines come up. You can do it in a table. A lot of people do that. And just make sure all your labels are already there. It's gonna save you a lot of time in the future if your labels are already there, especially if you're not as comfortable with Acrobat and you're more comfortable with Word, okay? And if you're in Word, you wanna save it as a PDF, then you run the scan, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So you might start off with Word, but ultimately you wanna make it into a PDF, so then we can run the scan to be able to do that. So I'm going to find my forms option. Oops, do I see it here? Let me see. Don't see it. Don't see it. Don't see it. Okay, well, guess what? I can go to here to more tools and let's clear this out. I'm going to type out form. Okay, and here it is. Prepare form. Okay, great. Quickly convert Microsoft Word and Excel or scan forms into PDF forms. So I'm just going to go ahead and just this time just drag it there. That's fun. I click on that and this is going to take me right away to begin select a file scan a document or start from scratch okay now i currently have this document open so that's made it nice and easy for me okay great and then i would just actually start it sometimes you actually need to go finding the file right you can if, if no document was open you can go ahead and find the file on your computer and then just bring it in if you like Right now it's asking me this document requires signatures at this point. It does not, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. All right. And then here's also your create new if you wanted to do that. Okay. And if you have something on a scanner, then you can run through that process just the same. If your scanner is connected to your computer, that is. Okay. And then you have this very, very important part here. Form field action detection is on. Okay. So mining currently is on, but if I click on change, it's going to take me over here to my preferences, which we've seen a couple of times. And then here is a category called forms. And you want to make sure to turn that on inside of the checkbox. All right. So I'm good to go. So let's just watch when I click on start. Amazing. Bam. So quickly it's done. So it found all of these little options here. And not only did it put in these little individual tech box, text boxes, but it also took the labeling from those text boxes. Okay, and then it put them in there, put them in there, put them in there. Okay, that's great. And then sometimes it might not get it right, so you wanna just check it out. Now, if you're ever exporting it and you're saving all these things as like a CSV file, these names are gonna be very important because the label will in fact come with it. Okay, and then they'll actually have that those taggings on there. All right, now you'll see, okay, great. Lots of good information here, good. And notice how they're not all the same. We don't want it to say price row, price row, price row, or address and address because Acrobat will see that as repeating. So you want to keep that in mind. Could be an easy thing to overlook that you want to actually have them have unique identifying names. All right. And then this special request, that's another really good one. Okay, great. And then card number. Okay, good. And then oh, look at this one. Only one box came in. So we'll have to fix that. All right. And then this one also. Okay. Great, but so far, so good. All right, so I'm gonna stop this lesson right here just so you can see, bam, how easy it is just to 
use the form wizard to create a form based off of something you already created. Okay, so practice that and come back in the next lesson and we'll continue talking about forms. Now that we have a form more or less created for us with form fields and text boxes and everything, let's get a little tour of what we're seeing here now that we're inside of the forms panel. So you'll notice over here on the top, I have a whole bunch of options here for different types of form fields I can bring in, whether it's type, a checkbox, a radio button, um, even though things for date pickers, things like that, asking for a signature. You can move your mouse over all these and they'll tell you exactly what they do. And you'll also notice on the right hand side, I have a whole bunch of options that pertain to the object that I've selected. Notice here this says full name. This is address one when I click on it. All right, and then you'll also notice that when I right click on this, wow, lots and lots of options appear here. Okay, the one you'll spend the most time in is properties. But you'll also see there's some other things like tab order. Oh, right, right. We've probably been on the internet before where we tab, 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 and then maybe it goes the right way, maybe it doesn't, but we want people to have an intuitive flow when they hit tab. So you'll be able to actually change all that stuff. Here is renaming the field. Do you want this to be required? Okay, absolutely, that's a great thing. Maybe you wanna add on a new field altogether. We can do the same thing from here. Cut, copy, paste, alignment, all kinds of great things here, and then, come way down here to show tab numbers. You can see to change the tab order, first sort by tab order manually, then you can drag and drop fields where you want them within the field panel to modify the tab order. So when I click okay, you can see, okay, well good. Is that making sense? We're gonna have to come back to that because that does not look right. Okay, it's like, hmm, interesting. Okay, so we're gonna come back to that in a little bit because notice how this goes one, to two, and then it jumps over to three, to four, to five. Oh, I see what it's doing. It's just kind of reading it from left to right, going across and then down back again. So it's gonna be a little work for us, but it's gonna to be totally worth it in the long run. So I'm just gonna go right click. I'm gonna turn that off so we're not distracted by that. All right, now let's go a little bit deeper into this. Let's go into our properties. I'm gonna click on that. And you're gonna see we have a lot of different properties we can be working with. For example, we have general, and it's basically telling us, okay, what is the name of it? And you wanna have a tooltip when somebody mouses over it? Great, fantastic. Okay, form field, it is in fact going to be visible, right? We want people to be able to see it, or maybe you don't, right? So you can actually make it hidden if you like. Appearance, okay, do you wanna have a border in there? Okay, totally up to you, it's great, yes or no. You wanna make it a little bit more obvious, a little bit more visible. You can absolutely do that. Maybe you can change the fill color, however you wanna do that, right? If you again wanna make it as obvious as necessary, okay? And then the text. So when somebody fills this out, what do you want the text to look like? Okay, so you can make it so it's gonna be that particular size and that particular font, totally up to you, that particular color, totally up to you, hopefully pretty intuitive, but just know that you can change that and it's all manageable for you. Okay, let's take a look at these other things here. Just in terms of position, where's it gonna live, right? In case you wanna be very precise with things, you can always say that everything's gonna start off, bam, right at that part of the left margin. Okay, excellent. Now we go over here to other options, right? So we have our alignments, right? How is the text gonna come in when somebody writes in as left, right, center, whatever you want it to be. You can also put in a default value there. Sometimes that's good just to kind of give people a little bit of a hint, or maybe you just want to keep it simple for people like everybody lives in the state of California. So that is going to be your default value. Okay, and you can see, bam, there's a state of California, so a state, and you might want to say, it's always going to be the state of California, but maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but it's going to be most of the time. All right, and then we've got some other things. Maybe this is going to be a password field. Okay, that's something that you can explore as well. You want to check spelling, make sure that they're coming in properly when they're spelling things. Um, so it'll check for them. And then the here is like multi-line. So like special request, that mult might, might be multi-line. First name, last name, address probably won't be. But if something is like a lot of text, right? People might write like a few sentences. You might want to put in multi-line, right? Then you also have the ability to scroll long text. What does that mean? Essentially, if they go beyond the end of the text box, a little scroll bar is going to pop up, okay? And then if you wanna allow rich text formatting, which is gonna allow for more formatting, right? If they have that ability to do that on their computer, they'll allow them to, to bold it and do all that other stuff, right? So totally up to you, you experiment with that. And then again, here are some limitations if you wanna work with limitations of 
people write too much, just limit it, okay? Because it keeps going off the form and you can't necessarily see it when you print it, right? Again, totally up to you. All right, and then uh, we're gonna skip over these actions right now because for this particular field, it doesn't really matter, okay? And then there's nothing happening for this particular format, but just notice at some point I might wanna come over here like to make this a number format. I might wanna make this a date format, et cetera, okay? And then validate, right? There's nothing to be validated here. And also calculate, we're gonna be looking at calculate in just a little bit, okay? So I'm pretty much good to go. I didn't really change anything here. We're just getting a nice little tour of this. So I'm gonna click on close and great. I'm pretty happy with that, all right? Now let's take a look at this one right here, right? I'm just gonna maybe just do one or two of them so we can see, this is a price. So I right click on that. I'm gonna go over here to properties and I'm gonna go over here to format and then make it so this is going to be a number. All right, great. And it's also going to have dollars. All right, wonderful. I love that. So that's all set up, ready to go. So I know, for example, that is always going to have that format for me. I don't have to worry about that or my user doesn't have to worry about it when they type it in. It's all good to go. Okay, great, lovely. So I click close, let's do that one more time. Right click, properties, go over here to number and dollar sign. Look at that, it remembers me, fantastic. Click close, and then I'm gonna do it again for this bottom because this is gonna be a total. Right click, properties, and then this again is going to be a number. Bam, it remembers me, but guess what? I'm gonna do something a little different for this one, and this is gonna be a calculate. So you can see, I wanna calculate everything that's above it to then make it go, right? Feed right into that with the sum. So you can see value is the sum of the following fields, huh? Okay, wait, what, what field? Oh, there's a pick button here. I click on that and I can see it's gonna be the sum of price row one through five. So bam, bam, look at that. Super intuitive, right? That makes sense. None of these other ones, no, I don't think that's gonna really matter for me. So when I click okay, I click close and notice it automatically pops up with a zero. Okay, and maybe if that's too big, don't forget, like if that's coming in super big, you can come over to here to your, let's see, where was that again? Format, okay, and then, nope, sorry. I even get confused sometimes. There it is, under text, okay, and then font size, and then you have um, everything that you wanna change that, right, because this is saying it's gonna be auto, and then you notice I just made that smaller, it made it smaller as well. Okay, that's a pretty good size. All right, very good. Okay, so that's the beginning of what we can work with our properties. Let's take a look at one other option where we can actually play around with our properties for sure. And that's gonna be working with our dates. Okay, so I'm gonna right click on our expiration date and then go over to here to properties. And again, this time I'm gonna go to format. This time I'm going to choose date. Oh, great, that's nice. And now you'll see I have a whole bunch of date format options. So what do you want it to look like, right, when people choose it? So I'm just gonna do kind of the old standard. I'll just do, um, it's gonna look like this, right? So it's gonna be two characters for the month, two characters for the date, and then two characters for the year. Right? And then pretty much good to go right there. And then when I preview it in just a little bit, you're going to see that that is going to be a dropdown menu to choose the date. Okay, so let me preview it, and then we're gonna pause the video, have you catch up and practice this. So you'll notice over here in the upper right is my ability to preview what I just did. I click on that, and okay, pretty nice, All right? Form field, okay, so John Smith, okay, I hit tab, and it's ready to go. And I can just go ahead and start typing it out. Let's click here. Come down, hey, look at that. And it is now calculated. Wow, look at that, I created some math. Pretty amazing, let's try this one. Expiration date, and just like that, oh, awesome. So when did that's coming in? Okay, great, expiration date, that is going to be blah and blah. And I'm noticing here that my expiration date is for a credit card, so I can actually change that, so it's not going to be with the day, right? So it actually just needs to be the month of the year, so I'll be able to edit that now. So when I click back over here on edit, Okay. I'll be able to just come right back exactly where I was, right click on it, go to properties, come over to here, and then all I need is really just the month and the year. Okay, yes, 
That's what a credit card has. Oh, that was an easy change. Okay, so very good. So practice that and then we'll come back and we'll work with some other form fields as well. In this next lesson on forms, we're gonna learn about how to create a drop-down menu. All right, so so far we've been looking at um, some just basic text fields, also working with some uh, basic number fields created with dollars and also making it so we can do calculations and we also did date dropdowns. All right, now let's just see very quickly how we can work with just basic dropdowns. We're gonna put in the choices. So for example here, I have this choice for a city and people only live in one of three cities for my group here. So I wanna be able to make it easier for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna remove this city field and I'm gonna bring in my own drop-down menu option for them. So as you recall earlier, we have all of our options right over here. And if you move your mouse over it, you'll see, what is this one here? This one is add a list of choices, add list options from the property view. What's this one? Add a drop-down list, add menu options from the properties. Okay, I think I kinda like that one. So I click on it once and then my mouse kind of floats like that. And then I can just simply click again and then it appears just like that giving me the option to now click and drag and move that over likewise. All right, now, right now it's a drop-down menu. However, there is really nothing in there. So what I need to do is just add in my options. So when I right click, I go over here to properties and I'm gonna go over here to options. And very simply, because this is a drop-down, right, I'm gonna get several different options now to add in what items I want to be in that drop-down menu. So I'm just gonna just say San Francisco, add Oakland and San Jose. Okay, great, wonderful. I'm super happy with that, but am I really, you know, let's actually alphabetize this. So I'm gonna move this up, bam, okay. Pretty cool, and that's about right. Yeah, okay, good, I like that. Or I could have actually hit sort, and that would have done the same exact thing, right? A lot faster if you got a lot of things, and it's gonna sort it alphabetically. Maybe sometimes you are going to allow users to edit their own custom text, because you know what? Maybe there's more people than I realize, right? There are people in Berkeley also, okay? There are people in San Mateo, okay, great. You know what, so maybe I should allow for that. This is what's known as text validation. So you actually may want to have your data validated. It's only gonna be that, or you're gonna be a little bit more um, flexible, okay? And then when I come over here to general, I'm gonna rename this to city, okay? And then city, all right, great, love that. Good to go. And I click close, and now let's test it out. Go here to preview, and bam, there that is. Click on that. And oh, love that, so cool, okay, so easy. All right, now let's go ahead and go back to edit this. All right, and then I actually like to change what's gonna be inside of that top menu. So I'm gonna click on properties. And a nice little tip is what you might wanna do is have for your first choice up there, just say choose city from drop down. okay? And then I say add. And now that's going to be there. So people aren't confused. So now let me click on close, go to preview, bam, there that is. Okay, and then I'll still see all the same options right there, but you just might wanna make it a little bit easier for people. Okay, so let me close that out. I'm gonna pause the video, have you practice that. Really, really important, super valuable tool, and hopefully for you, relatively straightforward on how to execute. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to work with radio buttons. So there's going to be times where you want people to select certain items, but you only want them to select one of the series. So this credit card set of options is going to be a very good example where they can only choose one of these four or whatever. And if they choose one, the other one gets deselected. Okay. So you can see that Acrobat did its best to try to give me something. It's like, hey, I think I saw something there. Do you want that? It's like, no, thanks. So I click on that, get rid of it. And what I'm gonna do now is insert a radio button. So you can see here is this little circle. It says, add radio buttons to enable selections from mutually exclusive options. It's exactly what I was just describing. If you choose one, it excludes the other. So they cannot actually be all selected together. So you do it just by simply clicking on the button and then go down here and then click. 
And now notice this is inside of group two. Great, that's fine. And I'm gonna name this MC. Good. I'm gonna do another one. Bam. And bam. Notice again, still group two. That's very important. Okay, I'll just do V for visa. AM. Okay, again, still group two. And finally, discover. Let's type out D and again, group two. Okay, and I'm also going to align these. Okay, and the best way to align them is to come over here to our fields group and I'm gonna choose group two. So you'll notice there's a whole grouping over here with all the ones that I just created. I click on group two and they're all selected and I'm gonna align their top. So if I go over to here, you'll notice, okay, very good. Now they're all aligned. I don't have to worry about any of my kind of sloppy work there. Good, very good. I'm super happy with that. And then I'm gonna go over to here to preview and you can see, very nice, I have these all there and then watch what happens. I am a MasterCard. Oh, no, 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 I'm not. I'm a Visa. Yeah, cool. Oh, no, I'm an Amex, right? You can see that how when you select one, it deselects the other automatically. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of that. Okay, and I'm going to open up back to my forms options again. And you know what? I don't really like how this is just called group two. So I can very easily now change that by right clicking here going over here to properties and I'm just going to change where it says group name name to credit cards. Right. Nice and organized, right? Doesn't affect anything else, right? And then bam, there I am, ready to go. Okay? So in the next lesson, we're going to learn about working with these little signature fields and then we're going to learn about tab order and then we're going to learn about how to submit our buttons. So stay tuned, pause the video and please practice. There's going to be some times when you're creating fields that you want to make it very easy for people to sign. And that's where this little digital signature request field comes from. So if you move your mouse over to here, you're going to be able to see that there's a add a digital signature field, right? So this one automatically popped in there, right? And it's ready to go. So when I click on preview, you're going to see this is already ready to go. And when I click on it, it's going to ask me, sign with a digital signature, with a digital ID. Okay, this is me. And as a result, if I were to click on continue, I would be able to now sign with my digital signature. We're going to learn about that in subsequent lessons, how to actually create these. But you want to make it very, very easy for people to actually use a digital signature, right? And that actually like bonifies it, stamps it, encrypts it, and also makes the document final as a result. Okay, but how do we actually do that on our own? So I'm just going to just get rid of that because sometimes it doesn't exist. So very simply click here where we have add a digital signature and just simply click again and make that as wide as you need it to be and as tall as you need it to be. Make sure we can see the line underneath it. All right, and then again, you can right click and you, you can check out some of the properties. Just call it whatever you like. Okay, and then again, check, change the properties and the, the appearance and all that good stuff if you want to. And notice that there is also a new tab here. When somebody does sign it, what do you want to have happen? Nothing happens. Do you want it to mark as read only, right? So nobody can mess with it afterwards. Okay, so you do have that kind of control once you put this in because it is a very special field. It's a signature field. So therefore is the assumption that it is done, right? So nobody can mess with it anymore. So totally up to you. You wanna play around with that, talk to your team a bit about that. Okay, so. I'll click close and get out of that and pause the video, have you practice it. And then we're gonna talk about our tab order. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about tab order. So it sounds like exactly what it is. When you hit the tab key on your keyboard, what order do you want these form fields to flow? So let me just show you a problem. So I'm gonna click on preview and you'll see here, I'm gonna just put in a name, right? Whatever. I hit tab, put in something else. I hit tab and then oop, look what it does over there. It goes over to there. I go to the next one and then, and then it pops back over to there and then it goes back over to here. It is all over the place, right? So let me just get rid of all this good stuff here. Don't need that. Don't need that. And now I'm going to go ahead and fix 
the tab order. So when people tab, they're going to go full name, they're going to address, address, and then down, 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 down. Then they go back over to here and the next one and the next one. Okay, I'm just going to show you kind of like just the first maybe, you know, several of them, and then you can figure it out from there because there's just a couple of weird nuances and a few tricks. So I click on edit. I'm back to here. And if you recall from an earlier lesson, when I right clicked on any one of these form fields, you'll see an option to show tab numbers. I'm going to click OK. And you're going to see, ah, there's a rhyme and reason to this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my. And then this is 23. Oh man. Okay. That's that's a little bit crazy, right? So I don't I don't want that, obviously. So there's a couple of ways to fix that. All right. One, as you could probably guess, is a right click. So if I right click on this number four, that's a really easy one because it just needs to be bumped up to three. So when I right click on there, you're going to see there is going to be an option to move up in tab order. So I click on that and that very simply chooses from four to three. Bam, that's applied. Love that. But man, I got a lot of these to go and this is not really a lot. Like I want to do that. How many is that going to be 20 times? For this number 23. So guess what? If we go way over here on the right hand side into these little field options and I click and drag down, I'm going to see all of my fields right here. This is where the labeling really comes in because I can find city, for example, and I'll see it's way down here. Guess what? That's the 23rd item in the list. So if I simply click and drag this up, 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 and we'll look for address two, and then bring that down below address two, watch what happens. It is now number four. Okay, let's go over here to uh, state and let's move that right below. All right, what do I want it to be? Right below city, that makes sense. And look at that, that is five. And then we'll do the same thing for zip, which is going to be right after state. Okay. So you can see the process, right? Of course, you don't want to watch me do every single one of these, but we want to make it easier for all of our users to be able to just like tab, 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 go through all this stuff here. So it just has an intuitive flow that is not bopping all around. I can't even tell you how many times I've taken these forms and it's like, wait, how did, why am I all the way over here all of a sudden? Okay. So let's test this out now. Let's see if this is in fact going to work. I'm going to type out my name. Okay bam, and then address. Okay, good. It goes over there. And let's hopefully see this go. And then look at that. It went down there as expected. And now let's just see my drop down. That's pretty cool. I click on that and then San Francisco, and then let's hit tab again. Nice. Okay. Hit tab again. Oh man. Love that. Love that. Love that. All right. So let me just clear all this out for now. And encourage you now to pause the video, practice that, and see you in the next video. In this last lesson on working with forms, we are going to learn how to submit a form. We're going to learn how to create a button to be able to submit it. Now, this button is going to take you to a place that's going to give you lots and lots of different actions that you can use to execute certain outcomes. So you'll notice over here, I'm still in my prepare form tab and you'll notice over here way up on top is my little OK button, little OK button. So that is the ability to bring, pretty much bring in any kind of button. So I click on that and this little thing flies out and I'm just going to just simply click. And now I have basically just sort of like a generic placeholder for a button. Now I'm not going to type anything in right now, but what I am going to do is I'm going to go over here to all properties because so I want to be able to see what my options are here. Okay, so very similar to what I saw before. Okay, I'm gonna name this submit. Okay, and then maybe you want to put a little tool tip in there, submit form. Okay, bam, all right, and then all these other things here. But now, the only part that's gonna really be different is going to be this option here where we're gonna have an action. Because remember what this is, this is a button. So that implies some type of action. When somebody clicks on it, what do you want to have happen? So if you click on this drop down, 
notice there are a lot of options, a lot of actions you can actually have it go to do. Now, this is going to inform you for other things, not just for forms, because maybe you just want to create a button to go to a certain page, right? To open up to a file, to play a sound, right? To play media, all kinds of different things. Maybe you want to give people the option to reset the form, okay? So you have all those options there. What we want to do is we want to submit a form, okay? And once that's there, I choose add. And now it's going to ask me very simply, okay, so what is the URL for this link? Could be slightly deceiving because I'm not doing any URL, right? I actually want people to mail it to me. So if you just type out mail to all one word and then a colon, all one word with no spaces, and then you put in the email address of whoever you want it to send to, then you're good to go. And I actually like to make it so it's just the PDF of what they're going to export. Pretty great, good to go. And now I click OK. And I'm gonna click OK again. Or I'm gonna click Close. All right, now, now I have this button here. Now I can make this button look however I want it to look. On this particular document, we happen to have just some you know, generic sort of shape underneath there, which is gonna make it easier for me so I don't have to do that with an Acrobat, which could be slightly limited. But we have seen what some of the appearances options are. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this invisible, but it's still going to be a button and appear like a button because of what's underneath it, but the actions will then in fact be what's on this. So how do I do that? I right click, go over here to properties, and then for my appearance, I'm gonna say my fill color is not going to be gray. It's gonna have no color. All right, that's great. And then for my name, let me just go ahead and remove that. All right, and that's not gonna show there. And then let's just see, I think everything else should be a-okay. And now I click close. All right, and then now let's see it in action. So I'm going to now choose preview and then I'll just put some content in there. And then when I'm ready to submit this, watch this, this is now a button. Okay, and then notice how submit is no longer there. But do note that my little tooltip does appear when I move my mouse over it. And watch what happens now when I click on it. It's gonna open up to my default email application with the form already attached and there is my email address. How awesome is that? Okay, and you created that, right? Using a very simple button and then applying a very simple set of actions on there. All right, so please practice that, have fun. You see all the really amazing, amazing tools that Acrobat has to offer as far as creating forms. We'll see you in the next lesson. Let's just quickly talk about working with signatures because uh, there's a number of different times that you're going to have to sign things in a number of different ways. So let's just first talk about this option for fill and sign. Okay, so when I click on that, you're gonna see the one that I'm going to be using more than anything, and probably you as well, is this sign yourself. So when I click on that, notice this is already built in with my signature. If yours is not there already, you can go ahead and just click on the plus sign. And it's going to ask you to just run through a little tiny wizard to be able to do that. But you're going to see something similar now when I add in my initials. So when I click on that, you're going to see this is going to pop up, and I can do any number of different things. I can type it, I can draw it, or maybe I actually have an image of what I've already done. I've scanned in my signature on a piece of paper and I brought it in because I want to keep that nice and authentic. So I can just also come back here, I'm going to do my typing. I'm going to go over to here or maybe I want to change the style to something a little bit different. Okay, I can do that. Let me get rid of that. Let's see what happens if I draw it. Okay, I can do this with my mouse, right? Kind of, okay, cool. Or I can clear that. Or I'm going to use a stylus. I'm actually using this on my screen okay pretty neat so i have that option to do that just the same okay so my handwriting is atrocious so i'm going to get rid of that go back to typing and i'm just going to say capital d capital c and i'm pretty much good to go with that i'll click on apply and now later on if i'm ready to sign it or it's, i'm asked to put my initials i'm ready to go with both of these now so when i click on this now to bring in my full signature there it is Okay, and then I can also increase and decrease the size. I can delete it if I want to. And then guess what? I can do that one more time, bring it back out, 
And then let's just see what we have here. This is gonna give me the option to just put an X in there, right? You have all kinds of ways to just kind of like toggle back and forth between some of these other different options that it may just require you to do, right? So totally up to you, whatever your options are, okay, whatever you'd like to do. So I'm gonna keep mine as just a very simple, bam, just like that, okay? Pretty easy, right? Let me go ahead and just delete that. And let's just talk about a slightly different way that you might be working with signatures. Now you saw this in our earlier lesson on working with the form wizard where we, we were requesting a digital signature, okay? Which seems in, in my opinion, a little more kind of authentic. All right, so let's just go a little bit under the hood over to our preferences. I'm gonna go to edit preferences. If you're on the Mac, click on Acrobat and then preferences. And we're gonna see here is this option for signatures way down here, all right? now. If you do not have a digital signature, this is where you're gonna to go to create your digital signature. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go over here to this identities and trust certificates. Click on that and we're gonna see, bam, this is where all of my signatures live. Okay, so let me go directly to this one so you can see, oh, that's interesting. Nice, this is all my information. This is my business name. Okay, bam, I verified that. Okay, now if you wanna create a new one on your own, you're gonna go over here to where we have digital IDs, click on this little icon there with a plus sign to create your new one, click on that. And then very simply, you're gonna say, I wanna create a new digital ID. I click on next and you're gonna say you want a new digital ID file, click on next and it should sync up to whatever information is built in to your Acubat program already and then you just run through the process. I've already got one, so I don't need to do this again. But then once you do that, you are good to go to then digitally sign. Okay, so let me get out of this. Let me get out of this and let's see how I can now apply a digital signature to this document. Earlier we saw there was one way to do it when somebody is asking you for it, okay? Where there's gonna be like a little box for you to click on and then, okay, then it pops right up and that makes it very easy for you. But most of the time, that's not going to be the case. We have to depend on the wisdom of others to be able to do that. So if I want to sign this right now with this digital signature, I've got to go pretty deep into my tools to get to my options, right? So go into my tools and you're going to see there's this option here, strangely named certificate. Okay, certificate. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and just choose that now. And it's gonna pop up, nothing really looks different, except for the fact now I have this option to digitally sign. So when I click on that, it's gonna say, hey, using your mouse, click and drag to draw the area where you'd like the signature to appear. Once you finish dragging out the desired area, you'll be taken to the next step of the signing process. Okay, pretty cool. So bam, that is going to be my signature. And it's, hey, is that you? Yep, sure is. Right, cool, I can put in my password if I can remember it. All right, now it's gonna ask me to sign it. So it's gonna say signed. And now there it is, amazing. Okay, so, but remember, it's not super, super linear, okay? We need to actually create this first then we got to go over to where our extra options are, you know, built in to our tools to be able to find the certificate option and then digitally sign from there. It's not always the most intuitive, but look how slick that is and look how official that is. Okay, so I click on it. So, okay, this signature is valid. All right, good. I'm pretty proud of that. And that's it. So keep that in mind whenever someone asks you to sign something and you want to actually make it pretty bona fide. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video, practice that, and get your digital signature all set up, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Let's now just talk about some final steps where we're looking at our document properties. And some of these document properties could be how you want your document to be viewed when somebody opens it up, could be basic security things, um, could be some of your meta tags and data. So let's just see where all that stuff is going to live. Very simply, if I go over here to File, I'm gonna come way down over here to Properties, and we're gonna see we have this relatively nice looking dialog box, not too fancy, not too confusing. And it's asking, okay, well, what's the description of this document? We may have seen this earlier 
when we were looking at some of our metadata for accessibility, if you don't have anything here, you can certainly put it in manually rather than going through the accessibility wizard. So I can just put everything here. Okay, what's the title? Am I the author? What's the subject? Keywords. It's going to make it so it's searchable. And then maybe that's how you want things to show up on the web or on your computer or otherwise. Okay, so I can easily type out that stuff in there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and jump over here to my initial view. And this is actually kind of a nice one because it's going to give you some control of how you want your document to be viewed by people when they open it up. Okay. Because a lot of times it could be some confusion where certain things might be lost when somebody opens up your documents by meaning that it's kind of buried in there. Or it's like off the page, or maybe you want them to open it up, you know, with two pages side by side, one page side by side, you know, depending on the view that you want, et cetera. So if you can see here, do you want your navigation tab to be open? Yes or no? Oh, wow. That's a good one. Yes, absolutely. I want that to be open. That's very important. Here's my page layout. Do you want your single page? Actually, you know what? I actually want two up facing each other. Yeah, that's actually really important. Okay. And then your magnification, you can see here, you know what? I think I'd really like to have this at 75%. All right. Very good. Then you can explore some of these other options, like your window options, resize the window to the initial page, right? Oh, okay. Or center the window. So you can play around with all those different things here. Maybe you want it to be in full screen mode when somebody opens it up. Really lots of great options, hiding the menus and toolbars. Again, you have all kinds of great options here to play around with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, save this, right? And then come back and open it again. All right. And then we're going to finish off in a little bit, just so you know, on working with security, but just notice everything that I've done here. Okay. That's great. I've saved this All right now. I'm going to close this out and okay, close this out and then open up to check. And let's just see what that does. Amazing. Look at that. Bookmarks is open just like that. And it's open up with two side, two pages side by side, and then bam, 75%. Okay, so you can see that's there. My bookmarks are here. Okay, and you can see it's actually two pages side by side. I controlled all that. So again, file, document, properties down below here. And you can see, okay, great. What do you want to have there or not? Okay, so really experiment with other things that you may or may not want to do. Okay, I'm gonna get out of this for right now so you can see it. And there you go. All right. So really just it's about having control over your content, over your, over your visibility, how you want things displayed. All right. So pause the video. And we'll come back and we're going to talk about document security to password protect your documents. Okay. Welcome back. As promised, let's talk about security. What does that mean? We might want to password protect our document. So when somebody opens it up, they need a password to get into it. Maybe when they want to print it or do other kinds of things, we want to be able to password protect that. All right. So you've got lots of precious information here. So you want to make sure that not anybody can get to it. So let's go back over here to file. Let's go back over here to our properties options. And you'll see here, there is a tab called security. Okay. So you'll see here, there are some options here for document security. The document security method restricts what can be done to the document to remove security restrictions, set the security method to no security. And by default, yours may be that. Maybe you've inherited somebody else's document and it actually has says something else. So we're just gonna work with just password security for right now. And this opens up to a different dialogue box. And this part is, I think, relatively intuitive. We're going to focus on just this set of options right here, where very simply require a password to open the document or restrict editing and printing of the document. A password will be required in order to change these permission settings. OK, very good. And notice everything is grayed out right now. Why? Because I didn't click on the box and now I can put in my password. OK. Bam, it's a weak password, okay, but I like it. It's strong to me because I will remember it. Okay, very good. And then here's another one. Restrict editing and printing of the document. So maybe, okay, you are not going to require people to open it, right? Anybody can open it, but you don't want people to mess with it. Okay, so is their printing allowed? 
okay? Only for low resolution. Maybe people in your company keep printing stuff out and you're getting bankrupt on whatever you know ink you're using. Great, so totally up to you. Or you could just say no printing allowed. What kind of changes can be allowed? Insert, deleting, rotating, filling in form fields. Oh, actually, yes, I probably want that. So if you are filling in form fields and or your 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 clients are your audiences but you don't want them to mess with the form itself you would say just filling in form fields or maybe just for commenting okay any except for extracting pages you'll know what the time is for what you're trying to do okay and then you can also see here is enable copying of text images and other content so maybe you don't want them to do any of these other things but you are gonna allow them to just like highlight and then copy and then move it someplace else. But again, totally up to you because maybe that's the point of why you're even putting these security restrictions on to begin with, that you do wanna protect your content, all right? all right? And then this comes back to our accessibility question. Yes, do I want to enable text access for screen reader devices for the visually impaired? Okay, so, Again, if you want to have everybody to have an equal experience, you want to make sure that this is checked. If you are getting complaints from people saying like, hey, it's not working for me, I don't know why, somebody may have turned that off. Okay, so totally up to you. Just know what your options are there. Okay, I'm going to keep this as is. You'll be able to practice with this one since you'll have access to this file. And we're good to go. So congratulations on that. So hopefully this was super helpful for you in terms of security, getting under the hood, looking at all your document properties. Pause the video, please practice, and we'll see you soon. Well, thank you for watching everyone. This concludes our Acrobat Pro DC class. Congratulations, you made it. Well, we covered quite a bit in this class. Starting from the basics, we learned how to customize our Acrobat Pro toolbars, we learned how to convert all different types of file formats into a PDF, including creating portfolios. We also covered how to make real edits to not only our text documents, but also to scan documents. We spent a good deal of time mastering the number of commenting tools. We also learned how to create and modify forms, make our documents accessible, more secure, and so much more. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you again and hope to see you in the next class. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit learnit.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing Learnit.